Then please, Jen. Right, good morning, uh, members um, and uh, officers. Uh, welcome to uh, our meeting this morning. Um, before I start the business of the meeting, I'll go to each uh, committee member to confirm that they can hear and be heard. It is a legal requirement for me to do so. If you can, please have your video on so that you can be seen by those in attendance and the public watching. Please advise me at once if at any time during the meeting you experience any technical difficulties that prevent you from hearing or being heard. I remind members of the committee that you will only be able to vote on an application before the committee if you've been present for the whole of the presentation of and discussion on the application. I will now call upon each uh, councillor uh, name in turn. Uh, please speak to that you can, are able to hear me and I will confirm in response that I can hear you. Councillor Paul Andrews. Good morning, Chairman and all. Yes, I can hear you loud and clearly. I can see you as well. Yes, I can see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Polly Andrews. Good morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Good morning. I can see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Morning, I can see and hear you. Councillor Fagan. Good morning, I can see and hear you. Good morning, I can see and hear you. Councillor Foxton. Good morning, Chair, I can see and hear you. Thank you. Good morning, I can see and hear you. Uh, Councillor James. <coughs> uh, you're muted, Councillor James. Sorry, I can see and hear you clearly. I can also see and hear you clearly. Uh, Councillor Johnson, not arrived yet. Uh, Councillor Milmore. Morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. Morning, I can see and hear you. Councillor Milne. Yes, good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. Uh, good morning, I can see and hear you. Councillor Roan. Uh, morning, Chair. Morning, friends. I can see and hear you. Morning, I can also see and hear you. Councillor Selden. Yes, good morning, Chair and everyone. I can see and hear you. Morning, I can see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Stone. Good morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Good morning, I can also see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Wilding. Morning, everybody. Yes, I can hear and see, thanks. Good morning, I can also see and hear you. Um, Councillor Johnson not arrived yet? No, we'll go back to Councillor Johnson then. Um, I'd like to invite Mr. Bishop to uh, introduce uh, officers that are involved with the meeting this morning. Thank you, Chairman, members. My name is Kevin Bishop, Lead Development Manager for Planning Services. Um, today we have items number six, land off Kingston, Kingston Road, Kionga. Charlotte Atkins will present that application. Item number seven, land at Amyard Drive, 187 White Cross Road. Simon Withers will present. And item number eight, Eight Belmont Road, Hereford. Clive Lloyd will present that application. Also in attendance, Jen, we have the legal advisor to the committee today, Dawn Evans, the highways officer, Katie Jones, and the governance support team of Tim Brown and Jen Priest. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Uh, we now move forward then to. Um... Chairman, if I may just interrupt, Councillor Johnson has just joined us. If we could check, he can hear and hear us. Okay, fine, thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Councillor Johnson. Can you see and hear? Yes, I can, Chairman. Thank you very much. I can see and hear very clearly. And my apologies for being a little late. No problem. Uh, yes, I can also see and hear you. Fine. Um, we're all present then. Um, I would like to welcome everybody to uh, today's meeting. The Council is video and audio streaming this meeting live on the Council's YouTube and making an official recording. Please remember what you say and do in this meeting has a global reach and your words and actions should be chosen very carefully. Please ensure that all mobile devices are switched off to prevent interference with the audio and video system. Members are reminded that speeches are limited to three minutes. Right, the first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. 
Uh, we have two members that have uh, sent apologies, uh, Councillor Graham Andrews and Councillor Graham Jones. Item two, name substitutes. Uh, for Councillor Graham Andrews, we have uh, Councillor Bowen. Um, and um, unfortunately, uh, Councillor Matthews isn't able to attend to um, substitute for uh, Councillor Graham Jones. Declarations of interest. Um, are, have any members got any declarations of interest on any items on the agenda this morning? Uh, Councillor Paul Andrews. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, regarding item eight, I've got a non peculiar interest as I know the applicant's agent. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Rome. Yeah, um, I did um, um, try and get a substitute for this agenda item. I was then told by Mr. Brown that it had to be for the whole um, meeting, not just for one item. Um, my uh, conflict is with agenda item eight, really. Uh, I'm in the adjoining ward member. Uh, the, this uh, used to be my ward as well before we had the split of the ward in 2015. I'm the chairman of the Southwide Development Trust, which is based out of the Kindle Centre, which is adjoining the uh, application site and also the uh, Square. So my, my question is, I would like to speak um, after the ward member, Councillor Tillett, on the uh, matter. Um, I don't, I haven't got any interest other than the fact that a lot of the residents um, and one or two in particular did seek advice from the Southwide Development Trust because that's their go-to for uh, lots of reasons as my colleagues will know about the Southwide Development Trust and uh, I was one of the ports of call to give advice on um, their questions. So I would like to make a statement as if I was the ward member then I will not take any further part in the meeting. Now, um, both uh, Jen and Tim have said that's the right way to go about it. I don't know if Dawn can confirm that or tell me off or say. No, that's fine, Councillor Rowan. As long, if you're acting as adjacent ward member, obviously you are able to, uh, to, to speak at the same time as Councillor Tillett as the ward member, but obviously you will not have a vote on the application. All right, lovely. Thank you, Chair. Okay, and um, as you're standing aside as the adjoining ward member, you will be able to stay in the meeting and um, you'll have the opportunity at the end of the debate as well to uh, make any final comments before Councillor Tillett makes his final comments. Okay, that's fine. Thank you for that chat. Okay, thank you. Right, we uh, now move on to... Uh, Chair, Councillor oh, Chair. Selden has his hand up. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Councillor Selden. Yes, sorry, Councillor Harvick, but um, I have also an interest in agenda item eight and that I also know the applicant's agent. Okay, thank you. Um, right, that's all the uh, declarations of interest. Then we move on to item four, minutes of the last meeting. Um, we haven't received any um, notification of um, any errors um, within the minute. So are, uh, is the Democratic Services um, uh, ready with the electronic vote? Uh, yes, Chairman, we have 14 voting members and they may vote now. Okay, fine, thank you. So you vote for, against or abstain um, that the mm. uh, minutes are accurate from last meeting. We waiting on somebody? Yeah. Uh, all votes are in now, Chair. Those have been unanimously accepted. Okay, fine. Thank you. Right, we move on to item five, Chairman's announcements. I've got no um, announcement personally, but uh, Mr. Bishop has um, uh, got a, a little bit of news uh, with regards to the five-year land supply. So, uh, Mr. Bishop, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, We've just recently heard from the government that our 1920 housing delivery test has been successful and we've passed that. As a consequence, 
the 20% buffer on our five-year housing land supply has been removed and we only have a 5% buffer. What this means in reality is when you crunch the numbers again, our five-year housing land supply has moved from 3.69 to 4.22. Obviously, that's that, that's good news. That's, wel that's welcome good news. Still doesn't give us a five-year housing land supply, but it's moving in the right direction. And that is due to a, su um, a supply during the 1920 period of 907 dwellings being completed. And when that is crunched with the with the five-year housing supply data, that provides us with a uh, um, only a 5% addition to our five-year supply. All the reports um, today where it relates to 3.69, will now read at 4.22. Um, however, it does not change the weight or the recommendations on any of the applications. Thank you, Chairman. Oh, sorry, Chairman, just to announce that that, that will be, that there will be um, an, an addendum paper um, will be published on this matter shortly to the five-year yeah, supply. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Bishop. Good news. Right, we now uh, move to item six. Can I request that the public speakers for agenda item six attending as virtual attendees, namely Mrs. Davis uh, from Cleonga Parish Council, Mrs. Costello Bates, Mr. Noble, um, local residents, and Mr. Marsh are admitted to uh, the meeting. We got everybody in, Jen, or not? Yes, Chair, all, all are now in with us. Right, welcome to um, members of the public that are participating in this um, application. Um, after the um, planning officer has made her presentation, I will invite you to um, uh, make your um, speeches. Thank you. Uh, the first application item. Uh, six on the agenda is 193878, uh, land off Kingston Road, Cleehonga, Hereford. Uh, this is an application for the approval of reserve matters following outline approval um, for the development of 90 dwellings um, in this area. Uh, the uh, planning officer dealing with this is um, Mrs. Charlotte Atkins and um, the local ward member is Councillor David Hitchener. Um, so um, without further ado, I'll hand across to um, Charlotte to uh, make her presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. The site, as demarked by the Red Star, lies on the northwest of the B4349 Kingston Road and the south of the B4352 Madley Road at Cleehonga and comprises 5.22 hectares of agricultural land. Next slide, please. The site, as outlined in red on the top left site plan, is divided into five separate fields, which are delineated by trees and hedgerows, as can be seen on the aerial view. The central eastern parcel contains an orchard designated as a priority habitat. The proposed layout plan indicates how the scheme has sought to retain the field patterns and the orchard. Next slide, please. The site has an outline planning permission for residential development for up to 90 dwellings, which has established the principle of development and also the provision of a single vehicle access off the Kingston Road. Condition five of the outline planning permission stipulates that the development shall take place in accordance with the principles set out in the development framework plan. An extract of that plan is provided in the top left corner of the slide with a proposed layout plan for this reserve matters application alongside. These plans are also provided at 6.17 of the report. The reserve matters for consideration now are layout, scale, appearance and landscaping. The proposed layout reflects the principles of the outline development plan framework, which includes the retained orchard, centrally located play area, open space and attenuation pond to the north of the site and three areas of housing. Next slide, please. 
This is a plan of the approved vehicular access footway along the northwestern side of the Kingston Road, Pelican Crossing and New Footway and improvements to the junction with Croft Road where the nearest bus stops are located. The photograph was taken from Croft Road looking along the Kingston Road with the site on the right hand side. Next slide please. The layout accommodates 2.2 hectares of open space. As shown on the site plan, this is made up of informal nature conservation areas, a community orchard and a play area. The play area equipment is considered to be suitable for two to 14 plus years and would be made of primarily natural materials and include sculptural mounding to blend with its setting. The gradient and design of the attenuation basin means that it can accommodate a wildlife meadow and also be included as an area of open space. The Open Spaces Officer supports the proposal in terms of both the quantum and quality of these areas. The technical drainage details are controlled by conditions 18 to 20 of the outline planning permission, which will be subject to an application for approval of their details in due course. Next slide, please. Amended plans have addressed the landscape and tree officer's initial comments. They retain the vast majority of hedgerows and trees with protection measures to be in place during construction and methods employed to ensure their longevity. In particular, the three oak trees are now subject to a tree preservation order. New planting has been carefully considered to ensure it enhances the existing and retained soft landscaping and rural character of the site and also includes planting to promote pollinating insects. To the south of the site where the new access would be sited, there would be replacement and supplemented hedgerows together with complementary trees and understory native bulb plant planting. The outer perimeter hedgerows would be supplemented with native species plants. Overall, the landscaping includes 71 new trees, retained an enhanced orchard of some 7,299 square metres, a wildlife meadow of some 4,989 square metres and 192 square metres of hedgerows. The ecologist has confirmed that the submitted plans clearly demonstrate the development would achieve a net gain for local biodiversity and habitat enhancement over the existing site. Recommended condition eight requires details of the location of bird and bat boxes, hedgehog homes, pollinating insect hotels, hibernacula and refugia to ensure that the amount provided is sufficient for the size of the site. Next slide, please. The scheme is for 32 affordable dwellings and 58 open market with a mix of one, two, three and four bed units over eight house types. Other than the one bed units, all house types are two storeys in height. The overall approach is of a simple vernacular design and proportion with variety introduced through the different versions of house types, providing alternative roof orientations and porch designs together with different materials. By way of example, these images of the are of the different variations for house type R1, a three bed unit of 86.4 square meter floor area, which include render, brick and reconstituted stone alternatives and different porch designs. Next slide, please. House type S variations include different roof orientations, porch designs and materials, and also provides three bed accommodation with a floor area of 86.4 square meters. Next slide, please. House type A is the largest of the proposed units at 106.6 square metres and provides four bed accommodation. The variations include different fenestration pattern, sorry, the variations include different fenestration patterns to the elevations, some units having bay windows, porch designs and materials. Next slide, please. House types P and M are three and two bed units respectively. The indicative site street scene would face towards the Kingston Road set behind the open space with replacement and aug augmented hedgerows and tree planting. Next slide, please. House type H is the one bed unit and would be one and a half storeys in height. All units would have a cycle store shown on the drawing in the top right corner. Condition 12 of the outline planning permission requires the stores to be provided prior to the occupation of the dwelling to which they relate. The proposed materials comprise red brown bricks with red orange brick for detailing, cream render, mid grey reconstituted stone and grey and red brown concrete tiles. 
The recommended condition four requires samples to be submitted and improved. The window detailing, detailing of the house types includes brick arched heads and sills. The different porch designs are shown, including both canopies and a timber post porch. The house types are considered to be of an appropriate scale and appearance and sympathetic to the local character. Next slide, please. The position that the photographs are taken from are as shown by the numbers on the plan in the centre of the slide and their associated arrows. One is looking southwesterly from the junction of the Kingston Road and Croft Road. Two is looking northwesterly towards the north Sorry, towards the public right of way and byway with the boundary fence with brick piers at the old post office on the right hand side of the photograph and Lansdowne Villa in the distance. Three again is looking southwesterly with the rear elevations and gardens of the properties on the southern side of the Kingston Road on the left hand side of the photograph and the site on the right hand side of the road. The approved vehicle access would be beyond the oak tree and the existing gated field access closed off with a native species hedgerow. Four is looking northeast from near to the, exist the other existing gated field access. The Willow, a detached dormer bungalow, lies on the southern side of the road and is the only property on the Kingston Road that faces the um, application site. Next slide, please. These photographs are taken within the site and the numbers on the plan again in the centre of the slide and their associated arrows indicate the direction. The plan has been rotated for ease of reference with the north um, direction annotated. One is looking back towards the Kingston Road within the easterly parcel. The housing on the opposite side of the road can be seen beyond the hedgerow. Two is looking towards the junction of Kingston Road with Croft Road and the public right of way and byway. The brick gable of the old post office can be seen on the left hand side of the photograph. Three is from the westerly parcel, looking towards the boundary with the store to the north of Shark House beyond the field boundary. And four is looking north within the easterly parcel with one of the tree preservation order oaks on the right hand side. Next slide, please. And finally, these photographs are of the northern part of the site as per the extract of the site layout plan at the centre of the slide. One is looking southwesterly and shows the existing boundary hedgerow. Two is looking to the east with a northern boundary hedgerow on the left hand side. Three is looking to the west with a northern boundary hedge hedgerow now on the right hand side. And four is looking westwardly along the Madley Road with a site on the left hand side beyond, beyond the hedgerow. This reserve matter scheme is considered to provide an efficient use of land of the density approved in the outline planning permission and delivery of a policy and outline planning permission compliant provision of affordable housing. It would relate well to its context in terms of its layout, scale, appearance and landscaping and would incorporate both quality and a variety of open space, biodiversity enhancement, whilst protecting the amenity of neighbouring residents and providing a good standard of living for future residents. Overall, the housing mix is considered to be acceptable and the affordable units are shown to be well distributed across the site and indistinguishable in terms of their exter external appearance. Each unit would have a cycle store and 68 of the 90 plots would have electric vehicle charging points. The ecological management plan establishes management of the orchard and the new ecological features. Recommended condition eight will ensure that an appropriate quantity of wildlife homes are secured and delivered. To conclude, it is considered that the proposal constitutes sustainable development and reserve matters approval should be given. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Atkins. Uh, very clear presentation. Um, right, we now move to uh, our public speakers this morning, um, starting with um, Mrs. Davis uh, representing Cleonga Parish Council. Um, you will have three minutes um, starting in your own time. Thank you. Thank you. This is an environmentally sensitive site set apart from the main village by a main road. The level of the new build, including affordable and social housing already in the village, has ameliorated the need for housing local residents. Social change precipitated by 90 new dwellings, a community in its own right, with mainly few pre-existing connections to the area, will be substantial and may well present challenges. The Parish Council would ask that consideration be given to 
a hard standing receiving area for receipt of deliveries and parking being immediately built on site to prevent lorries and workmen's cars being parked on the main road outside the site or in adjoining roads. The bus to Kingston needs room to manoeuvre, which will be impossible if there is parking on the main road. There is a likelihood that Poplar Road and other narrow roads in the village will become a rat run, particularly at prime times, causing danger and problems to residents, especially children. All properties should be connected to the main sewer and drainage prior to any occupation of those properties taking place. Interim septic tank arrangements should not be permitted. Adherence to working time agreements are needed to protect local residents. In view of limited public services, this estate risks being car dependent with many families having two cars and or work vans. The allocation of 139 parking spaces may well be a serious underestimate of parking needs. The attenuation pond is also a concern in that it may not be fit for purpose and may prove unstable as a result of excess surface water. Our concerns about the lack of a mix of housing on this site remain. We would have preferred to see a mix of private and social housing along with the affordable. We have been given to understand that the actual outcome may be 100% rented or part owned, part rented. Inevitably, many new residents will be new to the village and possibly to rural life. This may present challenges both to the new residents and our local community in supporting them to link in with the existing village. Play facilities are not adequate on this site and need to take the needs of teenagers into account as well as younger children. In view of the commitment to be carbon neutral by 2030, we feel that there are many more measures that the scheme could embrace, including collection of rainwater from roofs for non-potable domestic use and solar panels. We have continuing concerns about the access to the SSSI, partly because of the need to protect this special site, but also because Monkshood, an attractive but deadly poisonous plant grows there. This large estate on this site is not something our village is comfortable about, but the parish council recognises that it is going ahead. However, we hope that these comments will encourage a development which considers more fully the need of potential residents, the existing village community, local ecology and the challenges of climate change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, more or less spot on three minutes. Um, we have two objectors, um, Mrs. Uh, Costello Bates and uh, Mr. Noble. Um, they are going to share their three minutes um, and I'm not too sure which of you will start, but I'm sure you've organised it between yourselves. So in your own time, please um, start in whenever. Thank you, Chair. Shelter UK has published England's largest ever social housing survey following the Grenfell tragedy. Stigma is the biggest fear these residents feel by society. Had Stonewater read this survey, it would know that Shelter, the YMCA and government is working, I quote page 37, to avoid the development of concentrated areas of social housing and to ensure their design is not distinguishable from other types of housing. Stonewater NG's designs include cheap rendering, tiny rooms, very few windows and many brick walls and fences. These are the types of dark crime ridden estates London councils demolished a decade ago. Shelter reveals that residents fear tiny spaces, poor amenities and being placed miles away from family. Charities want larger houses to be socially integrated as part of new estates, not isolated as ghettos on their own. Stonewater NG, how could you do this to people? Councillors, when your tenure is over and people ask what good you did for Herefordshire, will you tell them you successfully integrated social housing residents into new estates or isolated them away like some kind of lepers? 40 years of local wildlife research was not submitted to the planning inspectorate by the council. It included evidence of 77 different bird species. Clehonga is the largest bird spotting village in Britain. Great crested newts, badgers, dormice, and Europe's most endangered bat on this plot. The inspectorate acknowledged to me it relied on largely desk research paid for by Gladman and that Herefordshire Council needs to do the right thing. Please undertake your own ecological survey and save the endangered habitats of Cagebrook. We have no families waiting for social housing in our area. 
26 of the 60 Per Simmons houses were designated for social housing. Therefore, why do we need another 90? You are adding more strain to local amenities, doctors, schools, unnecessarily. This village has already built beyond its recommended number of houses. Hereford Wildlife Trust objected to the location next to a triple SI. Cage Brook is now dead of fish life. Brown trout and bird life like kingfishers due to the phosphate levels. All the new buildings in Kingstone and Cleonga allow the rainwater runoff to end up in the brook, which in turn ends up in the Wye, once a famous salmon river. The sewage works only just coped with a number of houses now in the village, and during heavy rain there are reports of raw sewage entering the brook. During the summer months children swim in the brook. Are they made aware of the pollution in there? Cars will add to the pollution from vehicles stuck waiting to enter Hereford on the Abergavenny Road. We are told we should be protecting our environment, yet the amount of building taking place in our villages has given no consideration at all to the environment or the impact on local people. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Noble. Uh, I now move across to um, Mr. Marsh, who um, is speaking um, on behalf of the applicants. So, Mr. Marsh, three minutes in your own time, please. Thank you, Chairman. I trust you can hear me okay? We can, thank you. Excellent. Members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to address you firstly this morning in respect to this application for the approval of reserve matters. As you'll be aware, outline planning permission has been granted in respect of this site, and this current application relates only to the matters of layout, landscaping, scale, and appearance. We've worked closely with your officers over the past year to negotiate the scheme to a point where all parties are content with the proposals presented now before you, with officers uh, recommending approval subject to conditions. In line with that outline permission, the scheme includes a provision of 35% affordable housing, including shared ownership units, and with a variety of house types, sizes, and styles, it will deliver the full 1990 dwellings, making efficient use of land in accordance with the outline permission. Overall, we feel the design approach seeks to provide a high quality public and private realm where all users benefit from a good standard of amenity while that of existing neighbors remains protected. Building design reflects the local character being typically two-story as your officers have explained and appointing traditional features and materials with a generally modern and varied vernacular form. The landscape strategy for the site provides for well-connected, high-quality formal and informal public open space, including the maintenance and the improvement of the existing orchard, play facilities for a range of age groups, including teenagers, water attenuation and soft landscaping, which adds to the overall visual amenity of the development. This approach has met with the approval of your key consultees, having evolved considerably through the application process. The applicants have embraced opportunities to deliver energy efficient buildings and renewable technologies. This includes a fabric first approach to the new dwellings and the provision of electric vehicle charging points throughout the site. Although drainage and flood risk, as you've heard, are matters to be dealt with through the conditions attached to the outline permission, a detailed design has nonetheless been provided to officers in this respect at the present time in order to demonstrate the proposal's conformity with an appropriate means of drainage that has met with the satisfaction of officers and key stakeholders, which include Welsh Water. Should be noted on this basis that Natural England also have no objections on the grounds of habitats regulations, special area of conservation or triple SI grounds. Indeed, otherwise the scheme provides for a high standard of green infrastructure, making good provision of ecological enhancement, again, as you've heard. Just to come back quickly on uh, Ms Davies' point um, from the Parish Council regarding construction, we understand entirely in condition 11 of the outline planning permission requires a construction man management plan uh, which includes provision for parking, site compounds and such like. In summary, the proposals deliver on the outline planning permission with a well-considered scheme that will provide a significant number of dwellings while creating a quality public realm, delivering ecological enhancement and allowing for the appropriate management of water. Your officers have reported that proposals comply with the development plan and with the advanced draft neighbourhood plan as a whole. Therefore, in accordance with national policy and with no material considerations indica in indicating otherwise, it's respectfully requested that you follow their recommendation to approve the application as before you today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marsh. Um, I'd now like to request that our virtual attendees leave the meeting. I'd like to remind them that they can watch the live stream of this meeting on the Council's YouTube channel. Um, so please don't just sit in the waiting room and uh, uh, wonder what's going on. 
but I'd like to thank you all very much and uh, bid you a good day. Thank you. So we now move across to um, uh, Councillor Hitchner, who is the uh, local ward member for this item. He speaks first and then has the right to speak at the end of the debate, but he will not get a vote on this application. So in your own time, please, Councillor Hitchner. Yeah, thank you, uh, committee. I, I have the uh, privilege of, of not being limited in time, whereas other people have to fit everything within a particular time. So um, you, you will have heard some of the passion uh, from uh, local people in, in Klihonga uh, about this, uh, um, this application. Um, and as, as you will be aware, this is, uh, this is for the reserve matters. So the principle of development has already been ag agreed. Um, it only got through on appeal. So there's a long history of, of uh, resistance to this development from, uh, from the local people. Um, I'm grateful for uh, the planning officer for preparing a very detailed report. I think she's worked hard over the last year to try to get uh, things sorted out. I think one of the things which was achieved was to get some power um, recharging points in all the houses. Um, so it's, she is constrained by, by the rules which have to be applied and the willingness of the developer to come up with uh, ideas. Um, but uh, she's worked very well on this, I feel. Um, there have been a couple of meetings I've attended with, with Stonewater at parish meetings. The first one, I have to confess, I was, I was pretty shocked. Uh, the way in which they, they seem to be dealing with the local people with, with lack of interest. But the more recent meeting, I, I've uh, felt a, a lot better about their approach. I think we have a number of projects in the county with Stonewater, uh, and uh, I would like to, to think that they would be looking to, to uh, develop the very best we can for, for our communities. Uh, maybe I'm a bit, being a bit naive in that, but um, uh, I, I, I do... I do. I am hopeful that they will be cooperative and helpful, and um, uh, involve the, continue to involve the committee, the uh, community. Um, there are two aspects which I think the committee might want to focus on. First, is, is the housing itself? Is it appropriate? Is everything being done to to uh, uh, achieve the council's ambitions of carbon neutrality, helping with people with fuel poverty? Um, the uh, the lack of car, car, the shortage of car parking spaces. I, I, I don't know what happens when is this going to be one of these estates where where you end up driving through and there are cars parked on each side, whether that can be limited in, in any way. I think there's a there's a, a possible issue there. So the housing is is one a carbon neutrality, um, uh, and the, and then the other is ecology. Um, I, I, I appreciate the passion um, with which Mrs. Uh, Costello Bates. Uh, talks and her concerns about insufficient research having gone on before. But this report does say that um, the, the ecology will be enhanced. Um, uh, and it, it, there is a, it's sort of over four acres of, of open land, uh, an area to be used um, for, the, for the residents, which I have to, have to confess, I think is a pretty good area. Um, just any more conditions which can be added, which will help uh, the fauna, uh, that uh, the cabinet, the um, committee might want, want to consider in, in, in that context. There are two other issues which, which are not really at the forefront of, of people's minds, but really concern the residents. One is uh, surface water and foul water, how that is to be dealt with. This is quite a large piece of land um, to be taking the surface water into an attenuation pond and then gradually filtering it into the, uh, the, the brook close by. And the residents do have significant concerns about whether this can be properly managed um, uh, and, and the consequences on, on the cage brook uh, as a result of this attenuation pond. Um, and we are reliant, I believe, on officers um, and other agencies to actually get this right. Uh, but it is so, so very important for us. It's not a, an opportunity where uh, the residents can actually put in, input in. Um, this is their final opportunity, really, with these reserve matters. So I just raised that as a significant issue. The, the um, 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 Mrs. Davis mentioned that properties should not be occupied until connection has been made to the sewers. This is a bit of a historic thing where on the Persimmon site uh, down the road, they, they did uh, start building and, and occupying before uh, the drains were, were fitted in um, and, and they continued to, they, they were allowed 
a certain number of houses uh, to be uh, uh, just using a tanker to take the waste away. Uh, and then they actually exceeded the number without uh, notifying the local authority. So there's a bit of a historic issue of allowing people to occupy these properties before the conditions have been met. And I think uh, the local people would like some assurance that this isn't going to be waived uh, on this occasion. Um, the, the, uh, the other um, issue is that of tenure of these homes. So the, the, the application you have before you is 35% uh, affordable homes, 65% uh, open market. Um, and, and, and I think as far as the residents, you might have picked up as far as they're concerned, they, 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 they accept this proportion. They think that's appropriate for setting up a community feel uh, in this particular area. What they do not want is 100% affordable housing, which they feel uh, is, 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 in, is uh, inappropriate. Now, that's probably not something necessarily for this planning committee, but as you look at the plans, you might reflect on, you know, if this is, ends up being a 100% um, affordable homes development, uh, what, are, are there some issues which you want to consider um, should be dealt with in the, in the application? Um, at the meeting I attended with, with the council and uh, the county, uh, parish council and Stonewater, um, they were very open and very honest and they said, you know, it could be 100%. It would depend upon uh, development money coming from from homes england uh, it's probably not not directly a matter for this committee necessarily but i think it's just something for you to bear in mind um, that the application here is for uh, as i say um, 35 percent affordable homes um, um, but but it may be that when it's actually occupied it becomes a higher proportion than that uh, those are just my opening comments thank you chairman Thank you, Councillor Hitchner. Right, we now move into the uh, debate proper, and uh, we have uh, first uh, Councillor Paul Andrews, followed by Councillor Wilding, and then Councillor Roan. So, uh, uh, Councillor Paul Andrews, please. Thank you, Chair. My my questions really or concerns are about the water service runoff. Um, I've had an incident in my ward with a um, sort of similar scheme as what's proposed um, recently. I'm just wondering, is it going to be taken over by Herefordshire Council and managed by Herefordshire Council? Or is it going to be a private firm that's going to look after the Tenerishan Pond and any ditching? Because that's my main concern for these residents, because what's happened in mine is that there's a management company there that don't maintain it in the proper way as yet. And I'm just wondering what, what is going to happen about that. Thank you. Right, thank you, Councillor Andrews. Perhaps we can uh, cover that straight away. Um, I don't know whether uh, Mrs Atkins can uh, respond, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, as set out in the report, the, the technical details for the drainage <clears throat> are covered by conditions on the outline planning permission, but the reserve matter scheme has evolved to ensure that the layout and the landscaping can accommodate a suitable strategy. Um, they've worked with Welsh Water as well, so there's, there's options. The, the attenuation pond could be managed by a management company or Welsh Water may adopt it, and that's something that will be picked up when the conditions are discharged um, on the outline planning permission. Um, it might just also be helpful to comment on Councillor Hitchener's point um, about the persimmon having um, the option to um, tanker off foul waste for a certain number of properties. That was an, a specific condition on that planning permission, allowing that interim arrangement. We don't have that same situation on this application. The outline planning permission is quite clear that the upgrade has to be agreed before development can commence and the upgrade work has to be provided before occupation. There is no interim plan about allowing tankering off of foul waste. Thank you. Okay, I think that's very helpful. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you. Um, right, we move across to uh, Councillor Wilding, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I sort of applaud uh, a couple of things about this application. Uh, they've obviously made a few attempts to address some things uh, with the children's play area and stuff like that. But my main feeling is that I would like to see this application withdrawn and sub resubmitted. Um, and that would be to enable the applicants to 
changed the design drastically to take account of the climate and ecological emergency, which I think is very vital in this site because there are so many dwellings planned. We've heard that the parish council would like to see climate and ecological emergency aspects addressed more and local objectors pointing out the problems to do with social housing and the social housing density. So that would be what I'd like to recommend that, the, that this is withdrawn and resubmitted and they take account of uh, the layout so that the orientation of the houses uh, and the roofs of the houses allow for the most efficient way of providing um, solar panelling on the roofs and also that uh, they take into account the idea of having um, car clubs and communal places to park those cars because although this design uh, in some ways is okay and it sounds like the parish council are willing to have it it just doesn't seem that in this day and age when we've declared a climate and ecological emergency that we should allow a developer to make a development like this that just doesn't take enough account of it. So I think the developers should take a good long look at themselves, take a good look, look at their children and their children's future and say to themselves, let's do something different. Let's change it. Let's start now. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, I don't know whether, uh, Mr. Bishop, whether you want to make any comment on, on uh, what uh, Councillor Wilding was suggesting, but uh, I think that uh, probably members need to realise that the application is in front of us and that's what we are actually uh, discussing this morning, not suggestions as to uh, the uh, applicant withdrawing. But uh, do you want to make any comment, Mr. Bishop? Thank you, Chairman. Just to say that uh, the applicants have requested a decision on this application as we have before us. We can't insist on an applicant withdraw the application. You can ask for a deferral. You can seek you can seek um, uh, refusal of the application. But the applicant has actually asked for a determination of this application, which officers have put forward has been in accordance with your with your policies in the core strategy. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Um, Councillor Roan. Uh, thank you, Chair. Well, at the moment, I can't... Councillor Wilding just spoke, and I'm going to have to agree with everything he said, every single thing he said. Um, I, I particularly hate, for years and years, uh, when we have a, a development where there is a social housing, you can walk onto the site and you can see, tucked away at the back somewhere, with a completely different finish, different windows, different porches, you can see where the social housing... Uh, percentage is it's awful i've always argued against it and i was our last representative on the board of herefordshire housing before it became connexus and i said that at the time uh, these houses should be built identically and then with what councillor hitchner has just said this site might end up 100 percent affordable that means it will be either part rent part buy or affordable let we can then go to 4.4 of our document, Strategic Housing Manager. He quotes that, bearing in mind 35% of this is going to be uh, affordable, uh, he can confirm that the unit sizes proposed meet the needs of the area. The open market ones, unit sizes meet the needs of the area. Now, if these are going to become all 100% affordable homes, that figure changes because there is very little demand for executive four bedroom homes in the social housing sector. There's an awful lot of demand for bungalows and single units. So I do think that this uh, application uh, needs to be completely rethought if it is gonna end up as 100% affordable. So far we've been told as a planning committee, it's gonna be 35. We've heard from the local member and the leader of the council, it could be 100. That is a huge variation. It's got a completely different look on the village and I do think that um, it's put us in a completely different place. 
I'd like to hear what Mr. Bishop says about it, but I do have more to say about it as well. Okay, um, Mr. Bishop, I don't know whether you want to comment at this stage. Uh, just to say, Chairman, that in, uh, first of all, as regards the designs of the property, they are ten-year blind. I.e., you you will drive. You can go on to the site. You will not see. You will not be able to identify which one is affordable, which one is uh, open market, because they will be exactly the same designs. So they will be tenure blind in that respect. Uh, in terms um, of the uh, um, amount of affordable units, we are discussing an application which is providing for 35% affordable units. We have not got a proposal in front of us for anything other than that. If they wish to change from that, then they, could, the, the, they will seek a variation of the section 106. But what I would say Anyone can build a house, and anyone can anyone anyone can let it out. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. I think uh, Mrs. Atkins wants to come in at this stage as well, please. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Um, obviously, Mr. Bishop has just explained that they are tenure blind. The house types aren't differentiated between the affordable units and the open market units. Um, we could, if if possible, go back to the proposed site plan which is on slide one or two, um, and that shows that they are distributed across the site. They're, they're not concentrated in one part of the site. There are some at the front, the southern end near the road, there are some in the middle, and there are some at the far end, the northern end by um, the open space. Um, and in terms of the size, these, these aren't executive homes. They are smaller end. I think I, I explained in the report and the presentation, the largest properties are four bed at 106 square meters square meter floor area compared to the other schemes that we deal with as officers um, from the larger house builders that isn't of the same size this isn't a large executive home development the three beds are 86 square meters we're normally pushing over 100 110 square meters for a, a normal three bed property so hopefully that just explains to members that the size of the units are at the smaller end which when the open market properties are brought forward as this scheme um, tells us they will be they're, they're a smaller style property, which hopefully will make them more affordable on the open market as well as the affordable units. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Atkins. I think that's very helpful. Um, Councillor Rome, did you want to continue with your three minutes? You yeah, yes, if, if, if that's all right. I mean, to be honest, you can see why this was originally turned down by the planning uh, um, committee or by the officer initially, and then um, it was won on appeal. Uh, I, I do think this is going to run into the same problem that every other tightly packed new estate runs into and that is you are going to see cars parking on the curbs there is probably nowhere near enough uh, car parking spaces i've looked to try to blow it up and actually have a look um as you know herefordshire has got a very very high degree of of um, self-employed one-man bands so a three-bedroom house will end up with three vehicles a four-bedroom will end up with four and uh, it's going to urbanize a, a herefordshire village um it is what it is, though. Um, I'm so pleased that we're not here today to decide on the whole application because I'd be turning it down. But I'm interested to see what my colleagues have got to say. Hey, thank you, Councillor Rowan. Um, we now move across to uh, Councillor Stone, please. Followed by Councillor Fagan. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I'd like to welcome the um, preservation orders on the three oak trees and also pleased to hear that there are going to be 71 new trees as a result of this development, which I think is very good for ecology and the environment. But I've got a few questions to ask, Mr Chairman, um, things that I possibly missed out when I read the report. Um, will the Stonewater Housing Association be looking after the um, play area and the open spaces? There is a history with these sort of developments of lovely open spaces and play areas at the beginning, and then you go along three or four years later, and they all look rather derelict with some broken equipment and um, gradually um, looking a bit tired. So they do need to be kept an eye on and looked after. Um, secondly, I think somebody mentioned that there were no solar panels, and I'm surprised about this. If we want to have an environmentally friendly development, um, this ought to be looked at because solar panels are very popular. Thirdly, I want to ask about the brook was um, concerned about possible uh, leakage of sewerage into the brook and people um, uh, using the brook. Um, could we have um, some reassurance on that, please? 
and whether there's any flooding in the area, which is a great concern at the moment in many communities. And finally, I quite agree with Councillor Rome, more parking is needed. What you don't want to see is cars and vans all on the um, surrounding country roads and on the verges. Um, if there's more parking uh, put in, then at least the estate will be um, a lot more manageable. And uh, although cycle stalls are very good, the fact is, this is a rural area, many people will be dependent on their car. And as you say, Councillor Rome, lots of people going to work, um, small businesses using vans and so on. So adequate parking on the site um, in this development is absolutely essential. And I also share your concerns about the 100% possibility of affordable housing. But I wonder if some of my questions could be addressed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councillor Stone. Uh, Mrs. Atkins, can you uh, respond, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, in response to those questions, um, Stone Water um, would be um, would provide the management company for the play area. That's agreed. The council wouldn't adopt play areas as we don't do that any longer. Um, solar panels have been discussed, but in this case, they're not proposed. Um, the applicant has confirmed that they're going for a fabric first approach. With regards to the brook, the surface water and foul drainage, again, that's going to be dealt with by the conditions 18 to 20 on the outline planning permission. So subject to reserve matters approval being granted, um, they will have to come back in to discharge those conditions on the outline. And that's something that would be resolved at that point, which does involve an upgrade of the treatment plant in Cleehonga to ensure um, that there isn't any harm caused to the brook. Um, the site itself is in flood zone one. Um, the principle of development obviously has already been established. And with regards to parking, um, my advice to, to members is that the area engineer for highways has confirmed that it's a policy compliant parking arrangement. We appreciate in rural areas, people all are more reliant upon their cars, but it's a balance that we need to achieve. Um, more parking spaces, it can encourage people to have cars. There is a bus stop not far from the site. The outline planning permission secures pedestrian connectivity with a Pelican crossing for residents to reach that bus stop. They can also walk to the village shop and the school. Um, so officers consider that this is the, the right balance that's been struck on this occasion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atkins. Um, now move on to uh, Councillor Fagan, please, followed by Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, I, I have to say, first of all, I find it incredibly disappointing that uh, Stonewater and Angie yeah, You've muted yourself. I didn't actually mute myself. Somebody muted me. Okay. So um, can I start again? You I'm can indeed. Sure. Okay. So maybe it's because they said I was disappointed that um, the council should have a partner in Stonewater and Engie that actually isn't taking our climate emergency seriously. Um, I, I just if if there are other projects in Herefordshire with these partners as well, well then I just absolutely urge us to have a meeting with them and and explain to them what the climate emergency is and what measures they could actually take to ensure that they provide housing that actually serves the residents of Herefordshire properly within the future. I don't think it's acceptable to lock people in fuel poverty when gas boilers are going to be defunct within the next 10 years. So we should actually have heat pumps considered. I feel uh, fabric first is a great approach, uh, but it's not good enough. We, we need to have some solar panels as well. Um, one of my questions is, um, do I understand that only 20% of the fencing will be um, sort of hedgehog highway? And, and if that is true, why only 20%? As far as I'm concerned, if you're going to have boarded fencing, that the whole site should be um, uh, accessible for hedgehogs. So that's one question. I also had a question about the maintenance plan for the wildlife areas and wildflower planting and the hedging. Because um, it's fine saying you're going to put these in, but how are they going to be managed? Um, I would like to see rainwater harvesting on a site like this. I think it's it's absolutely imperative that, given what we know about climate change uh, um, storms now, that we actually put put rainwater harvesting in, and I believe that can be a, a condition. I'm also concerned about the 
um, the, the chemical, the, the phosphates that will be entering into the water um, waterways here. And I just wonder if, if we're able to put in a condition um, in terms of users that the, the sort of chemicals being used in, in water systems can, uh, can be restricted to environmentally friendly chemicals. I, I think that it's something we should be doing in Herefordshire, encouraging people not to use uh, environmentally damaging chemicals in their water systems and surely we can put that in as a condition. Um, disappointing not to see car club uh, being incorporated into a development of this size and I, I can't understand why we're not asking for it in terms of 106 agreements but potentially something that the parish council uh, could take um, on board. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, what I wanted to know also, does the, the footpath, do, are there cycle and footpath connectivity to the village? Is it just footpath connectivity or is there actual um, sort of cycle connectivity as well? So all in all, I, I, I feel really disappointed by this application. I feel like it hasn't quite got there and, and I would suggest that we consider a deferral um, so that possibly some of these issues could be addressed. Um, and the final question I had was, if, if the social housing mix changed, um, would, would, how, how is that monitored or would it just sort of go ahead through uh, officer delegation or would the company just sort of change that? So I'm not quite sure how, if that's... Um, okay, you've, you've taken your three minutes now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mrs Atkins, do you want to come back in on any of those points now? Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just just to um, answer and respond to those points, um, we have discussed various options for heating with the developer. They're proposing gas boilers. That's policy compliant. Um, we have encouraged, but um, that's the scheme in front of us. The 20% fencing for hedgehogs, again, your ecologist is satisfied that that will provide sufficient um, dispersal routes for hedgehogs around the site, along with the retained hedgerows, new hedgerows and other planting. Um, the maintenance plan will control um, the maintenance of those areas. If, if not complied with, then the council can take enforcement action. With regards to the phosphates in the water, as I explained previously, the drainage is dealt by condition on the outline planning permission. So they will have to discharge those conditions. And it's at that point we will um, do the habitat regulations appropriate assessment that will go off to Natural England. In, and, and that will be the point where we assess the impact of foul drainage on um, phosphates and water quality. Um, as I said before, this is a reserve matters application. We can't revisit the principle or the access. So the footpath cycle connectivity outside of the site to existing facilities is something that falls outside of the remit of this application. It's only within the site. Within the site, um, your highways engineers are satisfied with the footpath provision. Some of it is alongside the roads within the development. Some of it is across the open space. So it gives a variety of routes for occupiers of the site to um, leave the site and get into the village. Um, and in terms of the um, open market units, which are stated to be 65% of the development, um, the condition seven on the, I think it's condition seven on the outline planning permission requires 35% affordable units. With securing that through this reserve matters application, there will also be a unilateral undertaking to secure um, who those units are allocated to and that they're retained in perpetuity. For the open market units, they're still a dwelling house. And as uh, Mr. Bishop explained previously, um, if someone wishes to become a philanthropist and rent their property out at a lower market rate, then that's something they can do. And as officers, we feel we don't have control over retaining the open market element for that use. In terms of the section 106 contributions, the trigger within the um, legal agreement is that contributions have to be paid on um, occupation of a, a certain number of units. It isn't restricted to affordable units. So the financial contributions would still be um, secured. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Atkins. I think that's uh, very helpful. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Uh, 
just... No. Um, I think your questions have been answered. You I may do... come back in. You, no, you must put your hand up if you want to come back in, but I'm going to go to the next four speakers first. Thank you. Thanks to Bowen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there may be a bus stop handy, but what are the provision of bus services as such? Are they the usual very, very intermittent of the service, or are they a fairly regular supply of buses for people to use? And do they go to the right places at the right times? I think that's very important. Enforcement. Now, we know that enforcement in Herefordshire has been very poor over the last couple of generations, I think. Um, and we've found all, all too often that enforcement is not expedient, which is a very sad statement, I think, to make. Um, do we going to have some sort of regular inspection to make sure that everything is uh, up to standard and being properly looked after? I do hope so. Um, as far as the actual designs go of these houses, has there been any, any, any thought into the actual room sizes? And are they, are they built to a certain standard or are they built down to the smallest possible uh, amount of space available? Because I, I noticed that uh, 86 square meters is rather less than what we used to apply for uh, farm, farm, farmyard, uh, farmhouses for uh, agricultural workers. It used to be about 100 square meters, I think, or a minimum of 90. Um, so I just wonder if we're not going to have the same sort of tiny little rooms that we saw happening or about to happen at Barron's Cross uh, when one of our development companies there put in a, a third bedroom that was barely bigger than a box room. Well, in fact, it was smaller, I think. Um, so I'd like to know if, if we've um, properly addressed that and made decent houses, decently proportioned rooms for people to live in. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Atkins, do you uh, respond to that uh, with regards to the size of the dwelling space? Thank you. Um, the room sizes meet housing standards um, and as we explained before it's a balance between not providing executive homes that um, officers and members obviously um, don't encourage because they don't support local needs um, so again it's a balance but yes they meet housing standards with regards to the bus services um, as explained before access was a matter dealt with at the outline planning stage it's not something we could refuse a reserve matters application on at this point um, with regards to enforcement, we're, we're making a presumption there that the management plan won't be carried forward. So I think we should have some optimism there. Um, but if there is a problem, then local residents can report it and enforcement officers will investigate. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Atkins. Uh, Councillor Selden, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I feel like I'm going back in time. Um, Looking at this, uh, it looks like the kind of developments that were built around Herefordshire 20, 25 years ago. And um, I thought we'd moved on, especially with our development partners um, in, in producing innovative and um, more energy efficient designs than we have here. And my, my fear is, uh, so to sidetrack slightly, I sometimes despair of the planning inspectorate when they approve this kind of density in, in, in a rural area uh, for the reasons that we've all expressed during the first debates about this site. With a deep breath, Chairman, I just don't know what to do with this. It's not one I would want to approve. It's not one I would want to inflict on Cleonga. And I think that came in our, with our original um, refusal of permission on this site. Um, it's really, really hard because I fear that what was being envisaged, as Councillor Rowan quite rightly said, there may well be cars parked everywhere on this site. I cannot see that we're going to have the um, capacity to build a bus service in and around that area in the immediate future. And hopefully we can get some money for buses that will um, come forward from, from central government. But at the moment, I just cannot see how this can be sustainable in that kind, though the principle of development I recognise has been already accepted. But from design and layout considerations, come on guys, we can do better than this. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Selden. I think that uh, probably this area is serviced by uh, 
a, a relatively good bus service in comparison to some areas within. Oh, I'm, I'm sure, Chairman. But the, the one last comment, if I may, and I sincerely hope that this is the last of this kind of development we see before this committee. Okay, thank you, Councillor Selden. Councillor James, please. Thank you, Chairman. I actually believe that all houses that are now built in Herefordshire should have solar panels fitted automatically. But we do not have the powers to, to insist upon that. And we have to realise that, um, you know, that, that uh, we have to look at this on the merits of our policy and national policy in planning. And on those grounds, it, it, it clearly, uh, we have no grounds but to, to um, pass it. As to the social housing aspect of it, you know, there's no control we can make over that because, I mean, I remember the early 90s when a number of housing developments, uh, the economic climate took a decline. And I had one in Kington, 40 um, houses, and they all had to be rented because they just could not sell them at that particular time. And you can't enforce, um, there is no law to stop that happening. So reluctantly, I think we've got to approve this. You know, there are maybe an odd condition at the, uh, on, the, on the periphery, but um, the, there are no grounds to refuse it. The principle of, of these number of housing on that site has been agreed. Those, and as to the design, well, you know, pe people have a different idea. Everybody has a different idea. What is a, a good design? Um, if, we were, if we were the deciders of, of um, this application on on design grounds, we would be here all day by day debating the relative merits of each individual house. So reluctantly, I I think we have to approve it. So is that a proposal, uh, Councillor James? Yes. Uh, have I a seconder, please? A uh, point of order, Chairman. Uh, can you state it, please? Yeah, I believe Councillor Fagan was going to propose uh, that we did a deferral, um, but she wasn't allowed to come back. That would have meant that I would have seconded that, uh, you know, two or three speakers ago. So I don't think it's right that we're now having a proposal to accept. Well, that proposal for a deferment wasn't made. Councillor Fagan, actually... Point Fagan. of order, the Chairman, you, Chair you told Councillor Fagan uh, to keep quiet. You didn't allow yes. her to make the proposal. Primarily because Councillor Fagan had exceeded her three minutes. Uh, she had pl plenty of opportunity to make that proposal within that three minutes, if that's what she wanted. Point, point of order, Chair. I did think that I had made that within, within my um, three minutes that I had said that I would... Look, I was looking at uh, deferral and I wanted to come back to you to say that I had said that and you wouldn't let me speak. So I, I think that there is a point of order there. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll ask Mrs Evans to clarify. Thank you, Chair. Um, just for clarification, Councillor Fagan's um, three minutes actually went on for three minutes 30. And in that time, there wasn't actually a specific motion to 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 move uh deferral unfortunately uh and obviously then you moved on um i can certainly go back and clarify that point by looking at the at the uh, constitution if you can bear with me if you want to carry on with the speakers um but at this point in time i, I will just check that but as i say that the there was no reference um in councillor fagan's uh discussions about actually wanting to move a deferral at that point in time Okay, that was my understanding as well. Thank you for that clarification. Um, Councillor James has tabled a, a proposal for approval of this application. I will not seek a seconder just at this moment in time. I'll uh, move on to the next uh, speaker first and um, allow Mrs uh, Evans to come back and advise me before I ask for a seconder for that proposal. So Councillor Polly Andrews, please. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Sorry, I'm having difficulty unmuting there. Do I understand that the, a management company will um, look after the uh, 
the facilities on site, the pond, the orchard, and all the others, the play area. Is that, have I got that right? Could that be clarified for me? Uh, Mrs. Atkins, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, that's correct. I have seen that system elsewhere. It, I, uh, in, when I represented a, a slightly different ward to I do now, after the first couple of years, it does not work. It seems to f fall apart. The management company move on to other things and the areas are not looked after properly. And I would hate to think that having put all these facilities in, that they're not cared for. And I think really these management companies, in my experience, are not effective. They fall apart after the first couple of years when the company move on to other, other developments and lose interest in the development. Okay, I just you. offer that as a warning. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, th I think that's um, something that uh, many members recognise. Um, but uh, one to uh, handle, you know, if that... Uh, actually should happen. Um, Councillor Milne, please. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> this, uh, the reference to, that we heard that the, uh, the, the applicants taking a, a fabric first approach is, is, is worrying. I uh, re really think that if we're taking a fabric fir first approach to trying to reduce our uh, um, carbon footprint and increase our energy efficiency of this scheme, then we look, need to look at the materials themselves, uh, um, both in terms of the choice of the materials, and I realise that uh, uh, there, is, there is a condition by which they need to be, be uh, uh, samples need to be approval on them, uh, and in term, terms of their uh, appearance. After all, uh, as um, the officer's report at 638 reminds us, uh, quoting the NPPF, that uh, they need to be sympathetic to local character and history, including the surrounding built environments and landscape setting. They need to establish and, ma and maintain a strong sense of place. Now, the choice of materials is um, fundamentally of brick, of uh, a veranda, and of um, a reconstituted stone, effectively a concrete for the, for the walls, um, which... It, you wouldn't choose if you were trying to, to if you were taking a fabric first approach that um, gave a sort of whole life uh, understanding of, of of the carbon footprint of, of the buildings themselves. You'd you'd be choosing natural materials. You'd take you'd take stone. You'd use lime. You'd use timber, uh, which are all vernacular to Herefordshire. And this um, re really, I think, needs to be embedded within our thinking increasingly. And as has been commented before, I hope that we we start to see more imaginative schemes come forward that do make clear reference to our local vernacular uh, and do understand that a fabric of first approach needs to consider the materials themselves. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Mill. Uh, Mrs. Evans, are you in a position to come back? Apologies, Chair. I've got two screens going on. I was trying to get the mouse to move between the two. Um, mm -hmm. Just looking at uh, the point of order raised um, and obviously in the Constitution, obviously it does say that a member may raise a point of order any time the Chair will hear it. Um, it does say that obviously you've indicated the section, the way in which they believe that this is, has been broken, but the ruling of the chairperson on the matter will be final and there will be no debate on the matter. Um, as I said, and, and obviously it's, it's something that you've picked up at the point of the three minutes of Councillor Fagan, there was no mention of moving a motion. And even though it went over that three minutes to uh, went over three over three minutes, 30, there was no motion on the table at that or mentioned at that point in time. Uh, it, therefore, it would be my view that obviously you've moved on. You have a motion on the table. It hasn't been seconded. We now need to see if that is going to be uh, seconded. And if it isn't, then obviously then you will be able to have that deferral put forward as a motion. OK, fine. Thank you. Um, right. Councillor James has actually proposed um, approval of this application. Uh, 
Can I ask, is there anybody prepared to second it? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. <clears throat> if I might say a couple of words and, and uh, I, I would then second uh, Councillor James' proposal. Okay. Um, right. the, I have, <clears throat> as Councillor Selden uh, uh, said, um, I find myself extremely disappointed with this um, uh, with this whole application. Um, it just looks like an attempt just to squeeze as many hands as you can get onto the available space. Um, um, whilst I'm not persuaded by many of the arguments put forward by uh, uh, the Green Party and the, um, you know, the Green Revolution and the carbon footprints and everything else, I do feel that we ought to take every opportunity to be as efficient with fuel and heating as we possibly can. I'm particularly disappointed that there are no panels on there or heat pumps, as mentioned by Councillor Fagan. I think there's a great deal that could have been done and hasn't been done. And it's time we changed our rules to make it very clear to developers that we're not prepared to look at uh, applications and obtain these things. However, in the meantime, as I understand it, and um, I'd be very happy to be corrected by you or uh, the officers, as Councillor James has said, I cannot see any clear reason to refuse this application. If I could, I would be putting it forward and opposing it. But I can't see any way that we could um, uh, stop it as it is. Even if we deferred it, and I fully uh, appreciate Councillor Fagan's intention in all of this, what would you defer it for? What is it you would ask them to do to come back with? Um, I find that very difficult, and I reluctantly um, second uh, Councillor James' proposal. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Um, so we have that uh, motion table for, uh, for approval and seconded as well. Um, so we move on with the debate. I've got um, one, two, three, four, five more speakers. So I'm going to um, draw a line under those five um, and then um, end the debate at that point. Um, so Councillor Fagan. Please. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. And could I request that we have a timer, please? I was looking for a timer and there, there isn't one available. If it's possible, that would be helpful. Um, I, I would like to ask that um, conditions be put in for rainwater harvesting on this on this site and uh, that also a 100% a hedgehog access is incorporated in the garden fencing. Um, I think give, given the situation with hedgehogs, it's it's quite easy to, to do that and um, allow hedgehogs free roam of the site. Um, and also, I just wanted to say that, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still not happy about the, uh, the climate emergency um, measures here. I feel that locking people who, a lot of them, if it's going to be affordable housing, locking people into fuel poverty is just not acceptable. And I, I don't think that any responsible housing provider should do that. So, um, and again, I've got an issue with the lack of uh, car club opportunities here. What what we're doing is just encouraging more and more traffic into Klihonga and that's something needs to be addressed. So potentially the parish council could look at that. I know Fanho Parish Council are looking at um, supporting a car club. So that's what I wanted to ask is if those uh, conditions could be uh, considered, please. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Uh, we've got Councillor James and, and Councillor Johnson um, proposed and seconded that motion. Would they be happy to consider those uh, conditions actually being included? Yeah, I'd be more, Chairman, I'd be more than happy for those uh, uh, suggestions, but uh, I'd have to ask the officers whether we can enforce that. Um, yeah, yeah, well, that I mean, was... The first two, I think we possibly could, and it wouldn't 
create much difficulty for the, for the applicant to uh, include those. Not, I've forgotten what the third one was now. But anyway. Okay, car club is the third one. Uh, well, that's perhaps, very difficult. To perhaps like uh, Mr. Bishop, perhaps you'd like to make a comment on that, please. Yes, Chairman, the first two, the rainwater, rainwater harvesting, we could add that as a condition and together with, um, I'm sure we could uh, uh, arrange for the 100% um, of the fencing to be hedgehog, hedgehog proof. Sure. Um, we can't in include um, provisions of car club, etc. That doesn't come within this uh, the ambit of this proposal. Okay, thanks for that clarification. Uh, may we move on to Councillor Wilding, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, I would just echo some of the things Councillor Fagan said there. I hear uh, what Councillor James said he'd accept that. So the, um, uh, the rainwater harvesting. But I would also like to see us, even if we, even if we can't absolutely insist, can we not suggest very strongly that uh, the developers include solar panelling. Uh, if they are going to put in boilers, that they be hydrogen ready boilers, that those are being developed at the moment, I know. Um, and that uh, there is car club parking. They may have to sacrifice some of the space for houses in order to create some car club parking. Um, and uh, they might want to think about restricting the number of the houses anyway, just to make uh, it, a, it a better space to live in. My other question is about the open spaces, the meadows and the orchard. How long are they protected for? Because I seem to remember at some point, some of the other application, we were talking about a pond for newts and it turned out that it was only protected for 10 years. Um, are the orchards and the, the meadows going to be uh, gifted to the community under the uh, assumption that they'll never be built, built on, for instance? That, I'd like to see that as um, something that's included. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Wilden. Um, Mr Bishop, would you like to comment on that last statement? With um, to oh, perhaps Mrs Atkins can comment on the, on, the, on, the, on the management side of that. First, okay, please. okay, Thank fine. You. Thank you. Sorry, Mrs. Atkins. Thank you, Chairman. Um, with regards to um, the protection of the open space, that's covered in the legal agreement signed at um, the outline stage. Um, so the open space is protected as open space to be delivered and, and retained in as such. If they came in for an application to build on the open space, it would be considered under policy at that time and policies right. okay so it's policies not... policies seek to retain open space it's protected as far as it needs to be for the purposes of of this application um in in terms of the um other suggestions officers have worked closely with the agent and applicant to secure the best scheme possible in terms of making it viable um and this is the scheme before members today and the management um the management plan, I'm not sure of the time period, um, but the management company is in perpetuity as long as the land is there. Um, the landscaping is usually protected for 10 years. That's a standard um, condition. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that clarification, Mrs. Atkins. Uh, Councillor Milmore. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I really put my hand up to <coughs> this application. As usual, Councillor James talks a lot of sense. Um, and I agree with everything he said, including um, the things he said, which, um, which were um, detrimental to this application. But um, we, as he said, we cannot refuse this application. And my main concern is if we did refuse it, um, it would win on appeal and cost the council money in, in costs. So um, the, the I originally put my hand up to second this application. Okay, thank you. Um, that completes the debate. Um, Mr. Bishop, would you like to um, sum up, make any comments before I go back to the ward councillor, please? Thank you, Chairman. Very interesting, interesting debate, and not um, not surprising. Uh, the officer, uh, what I would say, the officers worked extremely hard to get to a position where we are today, 
with uh, with this proposal, uh, as you'll see from the the time period that the application has actually been with the with the authority, um, to to bring it to a position where we could uh, recommend approval for the proposal. Um, this was a site which was um, refused by by the council previously um, at outline stage, uh, not least due to the uh, matters relating to. Um, the, 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 fa the foul drainage, etc. Um, but the inspectorate have granted permission for this with, um, and, and, the, and the, de the developers <clears throat> have to pay Welsh Water to upgrade the facility. And as you've heard from uh, the case officer, Charlotte Atkins, uh, that has to be in place. Uh, no properties can be occupied until that, that those works are, are completed to, to protect the water quality in the area. Your professional drainage consultants have reviewed the drainage schemes, albeit not part of this proposal, but reviewed it in light of the uh, the, of, uh, the 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 quantum of development and the condition which is the conditions which are attached to the outline, and they are satisfied that the the drainage uh, systems are are satisfactory and meet those needs. Um, I hear the concerns regarding climate change, and uh, hopefully we will move move on. Quickly with the review of our re review of our core strategy and with the SPDs which are coming forward, uh, that that is critical to to meet the aims which you you continue to put forward and quite rightly so as well. Um, but we are where we are with this application at the present time. Um, the issues, um, uh, Councillor, I know Councillor Wilding um, raised. Uh, re we can add. I would suggest as informatives to the to the permission, if permission is granted. Uh, suggesting that these areas are, are extensively looked at um, for uh, by the applicants to ensure that the, they they've got a note of that within there. I'm sure they are listening in anyway, but note of that on the on the permission itself. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Um, and then move across to uh, Councillor Hitchener to uh, sum up, please. Thank you. Um, well, as uh, Mr. Bishop said, I think that's a fascinating discussion. Just one or two points I think perhaps we need to be looking at longer term. First of all, with the management company, what's going through my mind is uh, two or three years' time, the, the, the residents lose interest. How, how do we inspire people to continue to look after those sorts of properties? So one idea is the transfer the, the uh, property, I suppose, to the, to the parish council in the same way as in Klihonga, they have a little recreation ground. Uh, why shouldn't uh, the local authority be looking after, the parish council be looking after the other property as well? But of course, that puts added responsibility on parish councillors, which they aren't necessarily going to particularly want to take. Um, the, the, the council could, could take on responsibility, but I, I, I know we don't want to do that for all sorts of reasons. Um, and there's Welsh water. So I've just got a, still a, a continued concern about the management company. And I just wondered whether there might be some ability to, to uh, require um, members of that management committee to be drawn partly from the parish council. Uh, I'm not sure that's something which we can actually put in place, but that's just a, a thought. I think um, I was interested in um, Councillor Rowan's comments about the, 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 uh, the, the size of the, the rooms, uh, and he's absolutely right. Um, the, these properties will, will may well be bought by uh, sole traders, uh, business people um, who who uh, uh, then have uh, four people living there and four cars, um, but the properties are smaller um, than, than the executive type houses. So so maybe this is an opportunity for people to get on the housing ladder. And I do hope that uh, we only end up with thirty five percent of social housing in the the other properties because they're a little bit cheaper than maybe the rest of the market. There might be a real opportunity for for those to be sold privately. Um, but there's nothing, I don't think anything we can do about that. Uh, we can't impose any conditions. Um, we, we are kind of, uh, we, we're stuck with that. Uh, and the third point I'd like to make is just about the, 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 the cars that are likely to be parked on, on the sides of the roads. Um, I do like this idea of there being a carpool, uh, car area where people park their cars rather than putting them in the middle of the estate. Uh, and I, 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 I'm in common with the committee. I'm hoping that future developments will take into account all these issues. And maybe uh, as has been said, this might be the last of a development like this that's put forward. Thank you, Chair. Hey, uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Hitchener. Um, right, we're now 
uh, ready to go to the vote. Um, the actual motion on the table is um, tabled is is uh, approval of this application with um, two additional conditions. Uh, one being the 100% uh, fencing uh, to accommodate hedgehogs. And the other is uh, rainwater harvesting. Can I have clarification? Uh, that's your understanding as well, Mr. Bishop? Yes, Chairman. Yeah, it is. Okay, fine. Um, so uh, can uh, Mrs. Priest um, confirm the number of uh, members eligible to vote? I should ask firstly, are all members happy that they've heard all the presentation and, and debate and that they're all eligible to vote? Okay, I see no dissenters. So uh, my understanding is 14, is that correct? Uh, yes, please? 14, I can confirm, Chair, and uh, they may vote now. Right, so motion to approve this application for, against, or abstain, please uh, vote now. Okay, Chair, all votes are in. Uh, we have 11 to approve, two against, and one abstention. Okay, thank you. Um, that motion is carried and this application approved. Um, I'm going to call for a 10 minute adjournment now. So um, if I could ask her. Right, we are now live again. Uh, so I'd like to welcome everybody back to um, this planning meeting this morning. Um, next on the agenda is item seven, uh, which is uh, our se second application, uh, 202687. Amy and uh, Drive, the garden of 187 White Cross Road, Hereford, uh, which is a proposed two bed dwelling. Um, the offered officer dealing with this application uh, this morning is uh, Simon Withers and uh, Councillor Bolter is the uh, ward member concerned. Unfortunately, Councillor Bol Bolter uh, had a prior engagement, will not be able to attend, but he has a written statement that uh, Mr. Brain will read to us at the appropriate moment. Um, we have one speaker on this uh, uh, application, Mr. Greening, who is the applicant's agent, um, and he has submitted a video submission which will uh, be played after the officer presentation. So, um, uh, Mr. Withers, if you're um, ready, please, uh, presentation. Okay, can everyone see the in front we can, of we can, thank you. Good, and you can all hear me because I've had a bit of a, a microphone malfunction this morning, but I'm just checking that you can hear me. Yes, you're yeah, loud and clear at the moment, uh, Mr Good. Willis. Good, okay, so um, the location of the application site is illustrated by the Red Star uh, and is located to the west of Hereford City Centre in an established residential area to the south of the A438 White Cross Road. There are no national heritage or landscape designations that affect the site and the proposal before you is for a two bedroom dwelling on the land in question on the land in question and reference to the uh, objections received to the application uh, establishes that the key local concerns relate to the impact of the scale of the dwelling on the living conditions of neighboring properties and highway safety and parking considerations within the cul-de-sac known as Amiand Drive. Next slide, please, Jen. Uh, in slightly more detail, this uh, block plan uh, identifies the extent of the application site with the red line. It comprises the unused residential curtilage of 187 White Cross Road. Uh, which is a substantial detached Victorian townhouse, uh, which has been uh, subdivided into flats. Uh, the western boundary is defined by the estate road of Amiand Drive itself, uh, a more recently constructed cul-de-sac of 22 dwellings. The eastern boundary is defined by the fenced 
boundary with the long narrow garden serving 185 White Cross Road and the southern boundary uh, comprises another fenced boundary which is shared with the rear gardens of 1 and 3 Amiens Drive. Immediately beyond the fence uh, and which will become more apparent uh, as I move through the presentation is a flat roofed double garage serving 1 Amiens Drive. Thank you, Jen. Next slide. Uh, the proposed site plan identifies the positioning of the proposed dwelling upon the site. It would be presented gable on to Amiens Drive, close to the fenced boundary with the communal area at the rear of 187 White Cross Road and aligning single storey outshot at the rear of that property. It would be set in from the fenced boundary with 185 White Cross Road by 2.8 metres and the shared boundary with 1 and 3 Amiens Drive by approximately 4.8 metres. Private amenity space is shown to the side of the dwelling and on-site parking for two cars is proposed. A number of revisions to the layout have addressed early concerns raised by the area engineer in respect of the ability to accommodate the car parking spaces and provide sufficient pedestrian visibility. Next slide, please, Jen. This image shows the principal elevation of the dwelling as viewed from Amiens Drive, it illustrates the relatively modest size of the dwelling, which would measure 5.9 metres to the ridge with an eaves height of 3.3 metres. The dwelling has a simple form, be constructed with uh, brick to complement the character of the locality, with recessed brickwork panelling and some rendered elements to provide some visual interest. The image at the top also shows the relationship of the dwelling to 187 White Cross Road, which is left of that slide, and one Amiens Drive on the right. I draw particular attention to the presence of the detached garage uh, on that slide, which acts as a buffer between the site and one Amiens Drive. The image at the bottom shows the side elevation facing one Amiens Drive, and for reference, the roof lights are positioned such that they would be 1.7 metres above the finished floor level of the first floor accommodation, so as to avoid the uh, risk of overlooking towards 1 and 3 Amiens Drive. Uh, the roof material would be a slate coloured metal clad system. Next slide, please, Jen. This, shy, sorry, this slide shows the uh, blank wall facing 187 White Cross Road and the rear elevation towards 185 White Cross Road. Um, in my view, it's the impact on 185 White Cross Road, which is of particular relevance and significance in relation to this application. And in this regard, I would draw councillors attention to the first floor bedroom window at the, in, in the gable on the southeast elevation, which is shown as obscure glazed and would be conditioned to be retained as such, for planning permission to be granted today. Thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, this slide shows the ground floor layout of the uh, L-shaped uh, building. Um, it identifies the parking provision, uh, also cycle storage and uh, provision for refuse and recycling. Next slide please, Jen. This image shows the first floor plan, uh, two bedrooms and a small bathroom uh, that would be provided within the roof of the building. Uh, the position relative to the garden boundary with uh, 185 White Cross Road is uh, particularly worth noting on this slide and as I've referred to it would be set in from that boundary by 2.8 metres. Next slide, please. Uh, the following three slides uh, provide a series of photographs of the site and the surrounding area. On this slide, the top two images uh, are views uh, of the plot from Amiand Drive, uh, the, the top left from the uh, driveway serving the rear of 187 White Cross Road, and uh, the top right uh, from the driveway serving 1 Amiand Drive. Uh, the bottom two pictures are taken towards uh, the communal area, which is located immediately to the rear of the uh, property 187 White Cross Road. 
slide, please. This slide uh, shows a series of images that uh, I've taken from uh, 185 White Cross Road. The picture at the top is from the only window serving the kitchen of this property. And on the right hand side of the image, one can see the single story outshot at the rear of 187 White Cross Road. Uh, the proposed dwelling, as I've said previously, will be located beyond this point and set back from that fence by 2.8 metres. It's considered that there would be some loss of outlook um, from this window, but it would be limited in my view. Views directly down the garden would not be affected. The bottom two pictures are taken from the garden close to where the gable end of the proposed dwelling would be located. Uh, and then looking back uh, down the garden towards the rear of the property. Thank you, Jen. Next slide. Uh, finally, uh, this slide uh, provides images taken from the kitchen window, garden, and first floor windows of one Amian Drive. Here, the relationship of the site is to be considered uh, is considered to be less impactful by reason of the relative distance uh, orientation and the presence of the existing double garage, which uh, can be seen on the right-hand side of each of these photographs. So in conclusion, the application site provides an opportunity to deliver a small two-bed dwelling on a piece of underused land that was formerly part of the garden of 187 White Cross Road. The dark design that has been proposed is of good quality and relatively modest scale, and it is considered to respond positively to the site's character and context, and demonstrates an appropriate level of commitment to climate change through the use of glazing to maximize solar gain, provision of an electric car charging point, which would be conditioned, cycle storage, and appropriate provision for waste and recycling. Uh, the concerns that have been identified through uh, the a consultation exercise uh, essentially uh, related to the impact of dwelling on the existing living conditions of neighbouring occupiers. This impact will be felt most directly by the occupiers of 185 White Cross Road, who will experience some, outlook, some loss of outlook from their kitchen window, as I've described. However, the setback position and modest height of the dwelling are such that it is not considered to be at a level that would warrant the refusal of planning permission in this case. First floor bedroom window will be obscure glazed to protect privacy and permitted development rights are recommended to be removed to avoid further, alter further alterations that might increase impacts in the future. In my view, there will be no adverse impact on the occupiers of 1 and 3 Amian Drive, as I've expressed. Um, further to this, concerns have also been identified in relation to the effect of construction traffic on parking and access to and from Amian Drive and it is accepted that there is likely to be some inconvenience during this time. In the light of this, conditions are proposed to secure control over the times when potentially destructive construction work could take place, and also to cover delivery times and storage arrangements to try and minimise the impact on existing residents who have expressed some strong views. In the light of my assessment of the application and having due regard and respect for the concerns of local residents, I consider this to be a policy compliant and sustainable form of development with a positive recommendation. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Withers. Uh, right, as I said uh, before, we have one speaker, uh, Mr. Greening, who is the applicant's agent. It, he has provided us with a video submission. So if I could ask for that to be played now, please. Who's in charge of that one, Tim or Jenny?
Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. As outlined in the officer's report, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. As outlined in the officer's report, the proposals are for a modest one and a half storey, two bed dwelling on a redundant plot along the access road into Anyan Drive. The dwelling has been carefully positioned along the northern boundary adjacent to the parking area serving number 187 Whitecross Road. This is to minimise any potential impact upon private residential gardens to the east and south of the site. Furthermore, the overall height of the pitched roof has been kept to a minimum and the west to east orientation helps to reduce the overall mass and appearance of the dwelling from the roadside and gardens to the east. The roof orientation also helps to minimise any potential overshadowing, especially when taking into account the site boundaries and adjacent outbuildings. As a result, we believe that any overshadowing to the neighbouring residential gardens would be negligible. The design has been developed to address any concerns over loss of privacy to neighbouring properties, with windows at first floor level being kept to a minimum, including the window on the rear eastern elevation being obscure glazed. South facing roof lights will be used to allow natural light into the first floor rooms and will be positioned at a suitable height to prevent overlooking. It is proposed to discharge foul and surface water into the main sewer as on-site infiltration such as soakways are not considered feasible due to site constraints. The building regulations part H require soakways to be located at least 5 metres away from any building and 2.5 metres away from a boundary. Therefore, on-site attenuation and flow controls are proposed to manage and restrict the discharge into the sewer network at a reduced rate in order to avoid any potential overloading. This will be subject to further technical design that we are happy to secure via condition which will be, need to be approved prior to any works commencing on site. In addition, permeable landscaping is proposed across the site to avoid any potential surface water runoff. Secure cycle storage and two off-street parking spaces are proposed and considered more than sufficient given the size of the property. We are aware that on-street parking has been an issue along Amiens Drive and understand that additional parking restriction measures have recently been approved in November last year by Herefordshire Council. This includes extending the existing double yellow lines and introduction of a no waiting at any time restriction within Amiens Drive. Therefore, we do not consider that the proposed development will negatively impact upon highway safety or parking issues within Amiens Drive. Thank you for your consideration. We hope that the committee members agree with the planning officer's recommendation and approve the application. Thank you. <clears throat> right, thank you uh, uh, for playing the um, video recording from Mr. Greeney. Uh, so we, as I previously stated, uh, Councillor Bolter cannot attend, but um, or is unable to attend, uh, but uh, there is a written statement. Um, if Mr. Brown could read that out now, please. Um, I have no objections to the plans reference 202687, the property in Amion Drive. The plans submitted fit the criteria needed for planning. Objections from residents appear to centre around disruption and safety issues if permission was granted to go ahead and build. If committee decide in favour of the applicant, I would ask that when building commences, the contractors give due consideration to the concerns of the current residents and disruption is kept to a minimum. And that concludes, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, right, we go into the debate proper now then, and I'm looking for our first speaker on this application, Councillor Milne. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Number one, I... 87 uh, White Cross Road uh, is a nine bedroom property, which is, uh, as I understand it, currently uh, divided into five flats. Um, it's the host uh, property for this, this application site, uh, and the application site uh, um, would, would remove the vast majority of its garden ground. Um, the leaving only a one parking space, and I, I do notice that uh, in the objections that um, there are inevitably concerns, as, as, as you do frequently get when um, you see these uh, guard, garden grab applications in urban areas, uh, local residents concerned about their pressures on parking that this, this may, may cause. And 
I, I, I certainly am concerned that uh, 187 uh, is left with only one off-street car parking space for a house of its size. Now, I understand that um, uh, the, the, the separation was made some time ago, but uh, um, nonetheless, ob observations are that um, local residents are using the grass verge. So the grass verge, which... Um, is lies outside the application site, but is is nonetheless um, proposed to be developed uh, as part of the of the proposal for a hard standing and driveway. Um, can I ask the officer whether we're going to see a separate application of some sort for the development of the part of the site that is outside the, the application site boundary that uh, would result in the loss of most of the gar grass verge? Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Bell. Uh, Mr. Withers, would you like to respond? Um, I, I can. I mean, there is no requirement um, or, or no understanding on my behalf for any uh, further development proposals that might affect that area. Um, I mean, what I would say is just to confirm uh, Councillor Milne's uh, thinking there that, um, you know, I think. A lot of the concerns uh, local residents have raised um, would probably promote the use of this garden area um, uh, as parking for, for the flats or, or provided perhaps for, 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 for the residents in, in the cul-de-sac. But, but of course, we don't have um, control over that and there's no conditional requirement um, in, in that regard. Um, the other point I wanted to make and, and, and whether our area engineer has, has any further to add is, is obviously the, the layout, um, the detailed arrangements uh, and the potential parking implications were all very carefully considered and did result in, in at least three variations of, of the layout to, to address the, the potential concerns in relation to that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mrs Jones, did you want to make any further comment or are you content with what uh, Mr Withers has said? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, the grass verge um, immediately in front of the property um, is actually highway land and shouldn't be parked on anyway. Um, obviously, there'll be a crossover um, constructed on the verge in order to access the, the property driveway. Um, so I suppose in, the, in that respect, there will be a loss of, of one space of on-street parking. However, the width of, of um, Amiens Drive would only allow for parking on one side of the road anyway. Um, so effectively there wouldn't really be a loss because parking could still occur on the opposite side. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate that the, the, the grass verge is highway land and shouldn't be parked on. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Jones. Um, Councillor Foxton. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? We can't, yes, thank you. Lovely. Super, thank you. Amiand Drive. I did a site visit to Amiand Drive and it was a touch of deja vu for me. I owned a period house on White Cross Road for four years, whereby I visited the proposed site almost daily to collect my cat, who only had to jump over a couple of fences for his daily hunting trips to the overgrown garden. Now, um, the site in question provided sustainability and sustenance for my cat for four years. Now, the overgrown garden is conspicuously visible from the road and the erection of a small house and garage might well improve the appearance of Amiand Drive. Now, Regarding any parking concerns residents may have, there is a TRO traffic regulation order due to come to fruition sometime this year to address the parking issues. Also, I note um, Amiand Drive, um, most, I think virtually all the houses have driveways for two or more cars, uh, which caters for parking needs of residents. And so um, having the TRO as well in due course, I think their concerns over parking might well be addressed. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Foxton. Uh, Councillor Fagan, followed by Councillor Roan. Thanks, Chair. Um, I just, and perhaps I missed uh, missed it. Uh, what, what is going to happen to the surface water is, is my question. Uh, I can't, um, I know it's not going in with the, the main drainage, but I'm not sure where it is going. Um, so, so that was the, the one question. And the other question, uh, well, following on from that, again, rainwater harvesting, it, uh, it might be a, a good condition to, to put on that property. And then also, um, did I see that there's, there's a commitment to low carbon technologies, but sort of nothing, nothing further uh, to that. Um, so in terms of low carbon technologies on the building, if I can just have some clarification on that, please, as well. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Councillor Fagan. Um, Mr. Withers? Yeah, so, so taking those uh, three points in turn, um, there is no specific um, strategy proposed uh, for surface water. You'll see um, in the report that Welsh Water have uh, commented that they would not wish to see um, surface water um, draining to the main sewer, the combined sewer, um, and, and a condition to prevent that uh, is, is recommended um, in line with Welsh Water's views. I haven't imposed a specific surface water um, drainage condition on this recommendation, but, but I could. I mean, ultimately, it would be for the developer to demonstrate one that they could contain that within the site, presumably to uh, discuss be uh, a form of attenuated surface water discharge with Welsh Waters Agreement, which would of course require uh, that condition as recommended to be varied at some point. So um, that's where we stand with regards to surface water. Um, I see no reason why uh, in line with um, debate on the previous item that we couldn't secure rainwater, uh, a rainwater harvesting vision as a condition of, of this permission, if, if permission is granted and, and, and councillors uh, wish that. That's uh, no difficulty in that regard, I don't think. Um, in relation to the sort of broader commitments um, uh, and in line with um, uh, recent changes in practice, um, uh, the applicant was asked to uh, complete um, the new uh, climate change uh, compliance checklist and uh, I've drawn on their responses uh, to that checklist in, in my recommendation. So, I mean, to confirm there are no um, significant contributions. Um, what's made clear is that the uh, building will be constructed in a thermally efficient way. Um, I don't think anything beyond national requirements as, as, it, as it currently stands. Um, no commitment to specific uh, solar panels or, or, or air source heat pumps or, or anything like that, but, but generally the, the property or the, the submission clarifies that the property could, um, so, you know, could, could, could be, in, you know, these could be incorporated by a future occupier. Um, so, so I'm afraid no, no firm commitments is, 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 is what I have to say on that. Thank you, Mr. Withers. Uh, Councillor Roan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my um, scribblings were nearly all to do with uh, parking. So are we going to see a net gain or a net loss? Are we going to have another house and two parking spaces for it? But at the moment, I'm assuming, regardless of what's coming along in some TRO, that outside at the moment, there is no top curb on that garden. So therefore, there's going to be a loss of two car parking spaces. Is that correct? Uh, the other thing I notice is there is virtually zero outside area. Uh, once you've got those two car parking spaces, there's a little patio area. So I'm assuming there's no drying area. A two bedroom house, uh, we'll treat it the same as a two bedroom flat then. It's a pity that there's not somewhere that a little drying line could be put up outside to take advantage of. Well, I think today could be even be described as a drying day. Um, is it right, do we need two car parking spaces for a two-bed place? It's all very well having a, an electric charging point and somehow for your bikes, but we're going to be discouraging uh, car use. 
But that again, we can hark back to what we were saying on the previous application and the previous item we dealt with. That's one bedroom, one car, two bedrooms, two cars. Where does it stop? I mean, it's a good sized building. It's good use of the plot. Um, I don't think that there's more going for it than against it. So uh, I would say I'd go with officer recommendation and approve this one, Chair. Thanks. Thank you. So is that a proposal? Yeah, may as well be. Okay, thank you. Have I a seconder, please? Councillor Selden. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wilding. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, well, I won't be uh, objecting to this. I wouldn't go as far as uh, seconding it, but I won't object to it. But I do want to just take a moment to say a few things about it so that any developers watching this can just think about these things. Uh, uh, Councillor Rohn just said it's a good use of the plot. Well, I don't think it is. I think the, the roof's uh, line is facing east-west and the roof has got skylights in it, which prevents um, future occupiers from installing PV panels. I don't see why when this building was planned, it couldn't have had a south facing roof and it couldn't have been all on one level. Uh, that would have prevented the problem uh, with neighbors gardens losing sunlight because I think 185, although looking out their back window, it's not gonna affect their sight lines down the garden. If they go out into the garden on a nice sunny evening, um, this is gonna cast a shadow over where they may sit to enjoy their barbecue. Um, so I think it does affect neighbours' gardens, um, and that's because it's one and a half storeys high. If, if the, the footings had been put down, say, a foot, and it had only been one storey, um, with the roof sloping to face south, uh, with room for 14 solar panels, so that it not only provided power for this dwelling, but could uh, provide power back to the grid, uh, that would have been a much better way to use this space and it wouldn't have affected the ability of the developer to make some money and to provide a small modest two bedroom house. So basically they just haven't thought it through and um, it's about time developers started doing that but of course I'm not going to object to it. So uh, there we go, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh... Councillor Wilding, Councillor James, followed by Councillor Milne, and then Councillor Selden. Councillor James, please. Thank you, Chairman. I, do, I don't want to say any more. I think, you know, the, the, there's no point in, in delaying this, this um, decision any further. Um, okay. End of the story. Okay, thank you. Um, We've got more, more important things to, more controversial things to do with. Right, thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Milne. Um, yes, thank you. Can I just briefly come back on the matter of the grass verge, now that we understand that it's in the public realm? Um, and I'm always, always, um, I mean, you may think, oh, it's only a little bit, little bit here and a little bit there, but uh, we're always uh, retreating on our green infrastructure. Um, I mean, I might, might far sooner see some small trees planted in the verge both sides of that road, because it's on both sides, some flowering cherries or something would be lovely, but, um, I mean that would be up to the to the residents to to, to decide, and if if uh, separately, obviously outside this application. But could I ask uh, if um, a members are minded to approve this now, whether um, the officer could um, add a condition whereby that uh, the that the project isn't started until the uh, consent, the separate consent that is required. I mean, it presumably would be required as a under a drop curb application or something for this, the, the, the element of the development of this site that's outside the application site boundary. Right, Mr. Withers, do you want to make comment on that? Thanks. Um, I, I don't think we could construct uh, a means by which that could precisely happen. I mean, I think in reality, these things, you know, these, these processes will be, will be happening uh, alongside each other. Clearly, developer cannot or the, the occupier of, 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 of dwelling um, would not be able to um, 
you know, proceed um, until such time as all the appropriate licenses have been um, secured from the highway authority to um, cross over the verge. I think that's probably my my understanding is that, um, you know, I suppose we could prior prior to occupation, we we could condition that that that, that all of that. Um, uh, that, that those, those separate procedural matters are, are, are dealt with. That, that wouldn't be unreasonable in my view. Okay, thank you. That's all I, I was asking. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Thank you, Mr. Withers. Um, Councillor Selden, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. A um, couple of things. First of all, the, the provision of PV panels on the roofs like this. I've seen PV panels the size of slates being put on roofs these days and I see no reason why we can't insist that those kind of panels are insisted in a design even if even if there's a dormer window or a, 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 a what are they called Velux window um, incorporated you can fit solar panels around them and that's the kind of thing I think in this um, instance would be suitable um, the orientation of the roof I understand where Council One is coming from but uh, I think you know this is one we've got I really don't like infill building like this because I think it sacrifices the gardens of of um, the, the properties but uh, in the case of what's before us I, I'm happy to second the proposal in this in this case chairman thank you okay thank you councillor Selden that completes the um, uh, speakers on this application um, Mr Bishop if you'd like to uh, make any comment before we go to the vote You're muted, Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, Chairman. I just say that members have picked up on the on the small uh, nature of the site, um, the requirements uh, in, in relation to how to develop that, in relation to the impacts on the adjoining neighbours. You've heard the case officer has identified that there's been three different uh, designs uh, looked at um, uh, to a, to a, to come to a position where we are today, which. Uh, reduces less uh, impact on the on the adjoining properties and provides also appropriate uh, par off, off off street parking as well. Um, we could, um, as regards the question raised regarding the uh, uh, license to cross over the highway, that is normally added as a as a as a note to the to to the planning permission that that that, that is that is a requirement. So we can do that as well. Um, I also hear the, the comments from Councillor Selden as well relating to the small solar panels, and I have seen those as well. Um, uh, and yes, those would be um, appropriate for this, this type of development if, if, they, if they came forward with it. Um, surface water, drainage, um, uh, some slight confusion there because the, uh, obviously the agent has identified that they not to drain within the site, uh, but he will probably be looking for some dispensation from Welsh water to drain into the sewer. Uh, but it, it, in regards to that, um, our standard, which is becoming now our standard, uh, rainwater harvesting will, will, will assist with that and assist him with his negotiations, no doubt, with Welsh water. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Um, so we have a motion on the table uh, for approval of this application with the additional um, conditions with regards to uh, rainwater harvesting and the requirements with the drop curb, um, basically. Um, I think that was it, wasn't it, Mr. Bishop? Yes, it was, Chairman, together with a note on that uh, in that respect as well, yes. Yes, fine, yep. thank you. So the proposers uh, are happy with that. Thank you. Are the, are the proposers? Uh, so we've got um, Councillor Ronan Selden. Are you, you content with that, those conditions? Yes, fine. Thank you. Uh, can I remind members of the committee that you can only vote on the application before committee if you've been present for the whole of the presentation and discussion on the application? Uh, any members um, unable to vote? No indication. Uh, so can I ask Democratic Services to confirm? Um, if the voting system is ready and confirm the number of eligible voters for this application, please. Yes, Chairman, we're ready and we have 13 uh, members voting on this item and they can right. vote now. OK, thank you. So we've got it on the screen now. So the uh, proposal is for approval, against or abstain. Uh, if you could all um, vote now, please. 
Those votes are in chair and the results are 12 in favour to approve and one abstention. Okay, so that application is approved. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my intention now is that we move straight on to the third application uh, this morning, uh, which is item eight on the agenda. Um, where are we now? We've got one speaker, uh, Mr. Needs. Um, if he could be admitted, uh, please. Is he still with us? Yeah. Yes, he is. He is, okay. Welcome, Mr. Needs. Um, not sure if you've got a camera or not, um, but uh, are you able to hear us? Uh, you're muted at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can uh, see you and hear you. Thank you very much. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Welcome to you. Um, Right, this application is um, 201996, number eight, Belmont Road, Hereford. Uh, proposed change of use of land for a permanent siting of and the sale of hot takeaway food from a food trailer. Uh, the officer presenting uh, this morning on this application is uh, Clive Lloyd and uh, Councillor Tillett is uh, the uh, local member for this application. Um, but the adjoining uh, ward councillor is uh, Councillor Paul Roan, who is a member of this committee, uh, but is standing aside uh, so that he has the uh, opportunity to um, uh, actually make an opening statement and um, also uh, one at the uh, close of the debate. Um, as such, he does not get a vote on this application. So uh, without further ado, if I could ask uh, Mr. Lloyd to uh, make the presentation, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the application the application is site um, on the slide before is demarked by the red star and the location, the location is 8 Belmont Road. The site is situated to the northwest of the A49 junction with the A465, uh, the Asda roundabout. The site is in close proximity to a large supermarket to the north and petrol station to the east. And the area is a, as a whole is a mix of retail, residential properties um, to the and social uh, Welsh club to the southeast. Next slide, next slide, please. Uh, the top on this slide shows the uh, uh, location of the application, which is outlined in red and indicates its location and proximity to residential properties to the rear of this location. The closest residential properties, as you can see, being 15 and 16 uh, Belmont Square. Belmont Square itself is accessed off Belmont Road. Uh, and below then, uh, we have an aerial photo um, provided, which indicates the location from a, from a wider perspective. And next slide, please. You have the slide before you at number eight Belmont Road is outlined in blue and is currently used as a retail food store, the residential flat above and storage yard to the, to the rear with access to the retail food store gained directly off Belmont Road. Next slide, please. Uh, again, we have a block plan location map. Uh, and we can see um, as the uh, supermarket to the um, northwest and uh, as the garage um, to the east. And again, this is the uh, this is the site of the of the application of the trailer there. Next slide, please. Uh, the proposed trailer uh, can be seen, and is set back from the public footpath connecting Belmont Road to the Asda store. The slide also shows the display both left and right of the trailer, in setting the trailer onto the land of 8 Belmont Road. There is a serving area in front of the trailer with a depth of approximately 1.6 metres, affording customers the facility to be served and avoiding the need to obstruct the public footpath. Next slide, please. This slide shows the nearest residential property to the proposal, um, to the rear being 16 Belmont Square. And the distance between the rear of the trailer and the nearest residential property is approximately 12 meters. And next slide, please. 
Uh, this one appears to be a duplicate of the previous slide, just from a slightly wider perspective. Uh, next slide, please. The slide before you shows the street scene when viewed from the Belmont Road direction and towards the Asda store. Uh, you can see the, um, the proposed trailer on the left hand side there in blue. And it can be also seen from the slide that parking, public parking facilities uh, exist. Next slide, please. And this slide before you gives an easterly view towards the Asda uh, petrol station. Thank you. The issues under consideration in respect to this application are highway safety and residential immunity, both noise and smell. In respect of highway safety, it is noted that neither the local authority's highway area engineer nor Highways England have offered any objections to the proposal. The Council's Environment and Health has stated that providing conditions are met, there should be minimal, if any, adverse impact on the very closest residents. It is recognised and noted that Hereford City Council have objected to the scheme and that 17 site notice objections we received in respect, in respect of noise and smell, and these have all been taken into account. It has also been noted that a wooden gate uh, has been installed at this location and to access the rear of 8 Belmont Road. The gate has not been considered as part of this application. In any event, given the location, the gate would not require planning permission in itself as it would meet the requirements of permitted development. It is also viewed prudent to add an additional uh, condition to address any potential impact of litter. And to this end, the following condition is recommended. Prior to commencement to development use of the facility, a litter management plan should be submitted to and approved in writing by the local planning authority. The management plan should include the provision of litter bins on the premises and information relating to regular litter patrols. The approved details should be implemented prior to the first use of the premises, which shall there, thereafter be operated in accordance with the management plan. Therefore, in conclusion, whilst the received objections have been noted, and no objections being received from either highways or environment health, therefore, on balance, the proposal accords with policies MT1 and ST1 of the local plan, together with national policies, and is therefore recommended for approval subject to conditions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, we now move across to uh, Mr. Needs, um, who um, is speaking um, on, the, on this application. Uh, so, Mr. Needs, you have three minutes in your own time, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, good afternoon, councillors. Uh, before you today, we have an application um, from Daniel Marin, uh, otherwise known as Mr. Gyro, who's looking to move his modest uh, small business uh, from his home and from his stall that he has in town to a more suitable and sustainable location with its own electric supply and no generator being used. The business model is predominantly online services via Just Eat and Deliveroo. Therefore, we will not be placing any tables, any chairs or anything outside the unit um, and the food will be takeaway only. There'll be no plates, no cutlery or anything like that, which would, which would cause litter in the area. The application will enable him, as the name suggests, to cook gyros, which is a Greek dish. It's made from pork and chicken. There's no beef products being used and hence there will be no smoke generated from the unit. The, um, the product itself is cooked at home and then is brought to the unit where it's reheated. Um, the only thing that would be emitted would effectively be steam. We've put a um, two-stage charcoal filtration system um, into the site and work very closely with the HO. During the extensive talks that we've had with the HO, who've been involved with us um, along the way, um, they looked at products cooking, uh, they looked at the extract system, and they're happy that everything in place that we put will safeguard the amenities of local residents. We're conscious of the local residents um, and indeed uh, neighbouring properties um, and we wish to safeguard the residential amenity for existing residents as per uh, SD1 paragraph A. Uh, we've worked to eliminate, mitigate and reduce to an absolute minimum any adverse impact on our local neighbours. Uh, we've also looked at the council planning uh, policy paragraph C um, which relates to light pollution. We have no light emanating at all from the property that would disturb um, neighbouring properties. 
We've also taken into account the National Poly uh, Planning Policy Framework, uh, Chapter 15, which takes into account noise and light, so we will have no adverse effect on local residents. Um, currently, the area suffers from litter, as we know. We've agreed that we will put a management policy uh, into place. We've agreed that we will have bins outside and we will regularly litter pick the area to ensure that the environment is clean and tidy for local residents. Um, having taken into account all the comments that we've seen from neighbours and the people that we've spoken to, we're confident that we will enhance the local environment and what is currently a piece of wasteland to the rear of 8 Belmont Road will now be a managed area which we will look after. The markets team at Herefordshire Council have granted the licence for us to trade on that site pending the application being granted. Uh, today, um, we come here to explain to you uh, how the, uh, the, it's going to operate, everything that we've taken into account, especially with regards to the neighbours, and we respectfully ask the committee to support this application and this small business. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your needs. Um, I'd like to I'd now like to um, ask that uh, you leave the meeting. Thank you very much uh, indeed for your presentation. Um, remind you that uh, you can watch live stream on the YouTube of the, the council and um, thank you very much. Uh, Wonderful, thank you very much. Good day to you. Right, we now move across to um, ward members. So um, as I previously stated, uh, we've got Councillor Tillett acting as the ward councillor, Councillor Rohn as the adjoining ward councillor. Um, my intention is that um, Councillor Tillett will uh, address us first, followed by Councillor Roan. Uh, when it comes to the sum up, um, I will ask Councillor Roan to make his comments and then allow Councillor Tillett to uh, end the debate. So um, without further ado, uh, Councillor Tillett, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, as you have heard, this application is in a very densely populated area and that is why this application has been opposed by 23 residents all living in that immediate area and plus the city council where both ward members uh, oppose this application. Um, Belmont Square as, as has been explained are floods um, and that makes it that much more densely populated and the flats are mainly occupied by elderly people and by very young families um, which is relevant and I will come back to that point in a moment um, but they they fear uh, justifiably in my opinion that they will suffer from noise from odour and from light pollution during what is now planned to be 10 hours trading seven days a week so from, from midday uh, until 10 p.m., uh, although the application uh, actually suggests that that should be extended further to start at 10 a.m. Uh, and inevitably, uh, as we all know, uh, there will be further disruption outside of those hours to allow for deliveries, for setup, and for uh, cleaning. And I, I'm rather puzzled that the officer's report uh, says there will be no straight noise as they are not trading late into the night. Well, um, at the very least, they are trading until 10. Um, with clean up afterwards, we're, we're going to go some way beyond 10. And given the nature or, and the demography of the residents, many of whom, as I say, are very elderly or with very young families, uh, people are entitled to retire to bed before 10 o'clock if they wish. Um, or indeed with young families as they most desperately need to. Um, this site, as is mentioned in the report, had a very similar planning application just 14 months ago uh, for a shisha bar on the same site. That was refused under delegated powers. It, it didn't come to this uh, committee. Um, and at that point, uh, the officer said, the concern I have with regard to this proposal is its size and potential impact on the amenity of neighbouring residents. My concern is the occupants of the closest premises could be adversely impacted by odours. 
This would mean on warmer evenings having to keep their windows closed to avoid adverse impacts. They were the concerns of residents 14, 15 months ago, and they are still the concern of local residents. And that application was turned down on grounds that I know this committee will uh, know only too well of, of, of SD1 and a part of the MPP framework, which I will come back to specifically at the end. So the concerns uh, which led to an application on this site being refused 14 months ago uh, were echoed by local residents and they are echoed again now. And nothing that I have read in the report, despite the applicant's best efforts, can uh, remove those fears. But I do have two further concerns. Um, the presentation showed that there is a parking bay immediately uh, in front of the trailer. You will also have noticed that in several of the photographs, that parking bay was virtually full. And there is a reason for that. That parking bay is designated to be used by the shops that front Belmont Road and by the pool house dental surgery. Consequently, uh, it gets a lot of usage. Unfortunately, it also gets used by commuters who drive, park their car there and leave them often all day walk into town and collect their cars uh, later in the evening. Um, consequently, uh, whenever I walk or drive past, uh, that bay is well occupied and often completely occupied. Um, and so the additional traffic that this site will now attract, including a lot of delivery vehicles, because we heard in the presentation from the agent that there will be a lot of um, uh, Deliveroo, uh, Just Eat, uh, coming and going, will inevitably cause congestion problems, uh, particularly also with um, larger delivery vehicles that may occur. And this is right in the entranceway to the main access into the Asda car park. It is difficult to believe that there will not be problems. And finally, again, as we saw in the presentation, the site fronts directly onto the pavement. This is the main pedestrian access into ASDA, the Kindle Center, the Dental Access Clinic, uh, the Hereford Medical Group Satellite Surgery, and the footpath through to the Riverside. And that is used by a huge number of pedestrians. Uh, all, all sides of the roundabout, as we've heard, are quite densely populated. There's a lot of social housing in this part of the ward. And all those people walk in via that narrow pavement, as of course do shoppers who are arriving by bus. There are bus stops at the bottom of Belmont Road, right adjacent to this junction. And again, people get off the bus, walk around the corner and into Asda. So it's used by, a, there's a huge footfall. And given that the pavement is so narrow, even the allowance of having set back the trailer uh, by a bit will still inevitably cause congestion. You only will need one or two people standing there and the pavement will be blocked, particularly obviously for those using mobility vehicles, uh, push chairs and so on. Uh, for most of the pavement, it is barely one and a half meters wide. Therefore, particularly under the current circumstances, social distancing is actually impossible. Uh, so then add somebody else standing there and you see the predicament that we are in, because on one side you have the, the main fence and on the other side uh, a virtually fully occupied parking bay. So they are the objections, the main objection that residents have of sound, noise, light. Um, I, I, I can't quite understand why, why the applicant's um, agent doesn't feel there will be any light emanating from this if they're trading until 10 o'clock uh, at night. Um, but also concerns about uh, the parking facility and pedestrian access. And I would say that all of those um, clearly infringe the, the um, public amenity of this site for residents and indeed others. Thank you, Chair. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor Tillett. Uh, Councillor Rome, please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I'm speaking today in my capacity as the adjoining ward councillor and also with my South Y Development Trust chairman's hat on. Up until 2015, this was also part of my ward. I had asked for a deferment of this application for a site visit, so members can see just how close to the homes of Belmont Square residents this fast food unit is going to be. In 4.3 of our documents, our environmental health and trading standard comments are, the most likely to be impacted on our numbers 13 to 18. So because these houses, these flats run uh, 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 next to each other, it's numbers 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 Belmont Square. Almost all of the other flats are screened. Now the word there, key word there is almost. So screening is not the issue. Uh, smell is the issue. So in essence, our environmental health and trading standards team acknowledge that six homes or more are going to be impacted by the odour coming from this fast food van. A visit to the um, uh, to a visit by the environmental health and trading standards team to witness the applicant cooking chicken and chips in the middle of High Town, uh, a town square, is completely and utterly different to a scenario to witnessing a fast food van in full working order and very busy on a Friday and Saturday night in an enclosed area. And this is an enclosed area. You've got buildings all the way around it. Um, words such as, I do not believe it would have, have adverse impact on any residents, save potentially those closest. So they will be impact. And our environmental health and trading standards team acknowledge because the word save means accept. So in essence, a few people, those namely at numbers 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, will smell this food being cooked and being served for 12 hours a day, seven days a week, forever, for as long as they live there. Part of this application should have also been for a now created vehicular entrance because it is wide enough to get a vehicle in from the car park onto this parcel of privately owned land. This in itself should have been subject to an, an application as the eight foot high fence that was put up when uh, by ASDA as part of their new build application back in 2006 was put up at that height to protect the amenity of those homes in Belmont Square. And this fence runs all the way around all the way around past the Kindle Center and up towards the river. This, this catering unit is already on site as we could see. It's in a fixed position. It's connected to the mains electric and has been since last summer. So in es essence, this is a retrospective application. In 6.8, there is no mention of groups of cars gathering at these mobile units like they do. And a lot of these vehicles will be there to pick up food and take it to its intended display. I mean, as the applicant's agent suggests, if it is mostly for delivery and these products are already cooked at home, why aren't these products being delivered from the applicant's home? Probably because it disturbs their neighbours. Well, it's going to disturb these neighbours as well, isn't it? We've heard the residents, uh, we've heard that the residents of Belmont Square have said no thank you. We've heard that the city council, with their finger on the pulse, have said no thank you and you've just heard from the local member councillor Tillett also doesn't want it. Now if CV19, if COVID-19 has taught us anything it's how important the sanctity of our home is. Safe, sound and secure. Now this is really poignant if you're of an age group where you've retired or you've got small children. Now if we pass this today those residents will have to smell spicy processed meat 12 hours a day, seven days a week, once again, forever, no respite, unacceptable. Completely unacceptable also is the fact that uh, the, this application is, uh, I'll, I'll skip that bit if that's all right. We, I can sum this all up if it's okay with you um, through a, a residential amenity policy SD1. Development should respect surrounding uses while safeguarding good standards of amenity for both existing and proposed residents. 
and to ensure development does not contribute to adverse impact arising from noise, light or air contamination. Uh, I've skipped bits out because we've heard from the uh, planning officer that there are now um, a litter picking process in place. And as you all know, litter picking, keeping it clean is so close to my heart. Um, thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much for letting me speak. Okay, thank you, Councillor Roan. Uh, we now move to the uh, debate proper, and uh, first on the list is Councillor Selden, followed by Councillor Foxton. Thank you, Chair. Just some clarity, if I may, from Mrs Evans. Um, the issues around smell, noise, and general disturbance are regulated by the Planning Committee or the Licensing Committee? Because I'm, I'm a little confused about which, which bits of legislation would be used here to, to regulate those activities. Uh, Mr Lloyd, would you like to make a comment? Chairman, she asked, um, the Council saw and asked um, Mrs Evans that... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, point. Uh, Mrs Evans. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> when you're looking at obviously the, the 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 smell and the noise, they would we, they would come obviously under the license, but also that you'd have to take that into account as a planning consideration on amenity. Um, but we've heard in the report, and obviously is, is written to there about what the environmental health consultant has said about those issues, and that they can be overcome by condition. Um, so it, they are taken into account, but if they if they can be um, offset, which it would appear to be the case, um, then they, they can't be they won't obviously, you know, they are conditioned and they are dealt with that way. Okay, thank, thank you, Mrs. Evans. Sorry, sorry, Council Chairman, if I may continue. Certainly. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 I can't say that. Not for the first time within this community, I, I am perplexed by the fact that the licensing regime and the planning regimes do not actually clarify which sets of regulations are paramount and which ones will take precedence over any kind of um, issues we come here. I'm split again on this one, because we never get the easy ones, about whether or not we support a small business, business um, trying to make a, a, its way um, in the uh, ASDA area, I'll call it the ASDA area because I think that's what everybody knows it as, um, and the, the amenity of the residents. Um, and I, again, I'm struggling with the fact that knowing, and I like Giros, um, that um, how, how we actually square off these conflicting uh, priorities within our, and I would look forward to listening to the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Selden. Um, Councillor Foxton, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I respect Councillor Rowan and Councillor Tillett's detailed knowledge of the Belmont area. Now, I did a site visit and was none the wiser due to the fact that the rear yard was completely sealed off with large padlocked wooden gates due to COVID restrictions, I dare say. Now, I've always noted Mr. Bishop, our lead developer, emphasizing that we must only look at the proposal before us. And I totally understand that. I get it. Um, now, whilst I was unable to see the yard, my eyes were drawn to an awful lot of fast litter all over the place. Now, um, along that stretch of road, there are neighbouring fast food outlets giving rise to abandoned litter. Indeed, the leftover uneaten food was providing a gourmet, gourmet meals for two local lesser black-backed seagulls. Now, um, as with planning permissions for takeaway shops, um, I would welcome the requirement for the applicant to provide and service litter bins in the near vicinity. At the end of each working day, the area near the vicinity be cleared of any litter or other debris emanating from the use of the unit. All liquid waste should be properly collected and disposed of daily with none being discharged 
into or over the ground. I note that Officer Mr. Clive Lloyd has made several site visits, paying close attention to noise, cooking odour likely to impact um, nearby. However, there are major um, concerns and issues here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Foxton. Uh, Councillor Polly Andrews, please, followed by Councillor Milne. Uh, thank you, Chairman. This is somewhere that a site visit, I think, would have been quite useful. I actually saw the site myself when I was at a meeting at the Kindle Centre a few days ago, and the photographs don't really convey how close it is to the actual uh, residents that uh, both Councillor Tillett and Councillor Roan have um, uh, said. Um, I really do think, I, I remember last, at our last cabinet meeting, we turned down a, a, a similar application uh, um, for a Methodist chapel. They wanted to turn into a wine bar and it was felt then that the disturbance and extractor fans will cause unnecessary um, inconvenience to the local residents. Well, I think we have a similar situation here, that the comings and goings of people to this van will cause a great deal of disturbance to the local residents. I would also, I was slightly worried when I heard the uh, applicant's agent saying that food is cooked elsewhere and reheated. If mm. ever there was a uh, worry about uh, food poisoning, reheated chicken is it, I would have said. But I really feel that we can't support this application. So I would remove, uh, recommend re refusal under S and quote SD1. <laughs> hey, uh, thank you, <coughs> Andrews, vice seconder for that. Uh, Yes, Chairman, I will second that. Uh, yes, Chairman. Right, well, I did have Miss uh, Councillor Milne's hand up first. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll take Councillor Milne as, as the uh, seconder and uh, the next speaker. Thank you. Yeah, yes, thank you. I, I'm very happy to uh, second uh, Councillor Andrews's um, proposal uh, to, to, to refuse this application. Um, uh, uh, um, I think the, the grounds are very well well made, made by... Um, by, by, by councillors Tillett and Rowan, uh, that uh, that it fails um, policy SD one on residential immunity, um, and I would also suggest if if you're inviting us to give reasons for refusal that um, a policy L LD one uh, uh, is also engaged in view of the fact that it fails to uh, demonstrate that the character of the landscape and townscape has been positively influenced by design. Um, I would also add that because it's in the con central conservation area that we should consider L um, LD4 as well. Um, it is possibly an anachronism uh, uh, that, that it is in the central conservation area at all, but it does does happen to be so, and it does not um, enhance the, the character of the conservation area. Um, an MT1 on traffic as well. Uh, so if those are, if that if, if that helps some um, councillor Andrews with a selection of reasons for refusal, um, it's up to her to endorse them. Chair, yeah, yeah, that's just... okay. I'll ask uh, Councillor Polly Andrews if she. I'm very grateful for Councillor Bill's uh, ad additions. Okay, fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll ask officers to comment on that shortly. Uh, Councillor Bowen, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I just think this emphasises how important it is to have the privilege of site visits. I think it is high time we got back to having proper site visits. It makes a huge difference. Personal reconnaissance is very rarely wasted. First rule of warfare, first rule of planning. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Councillor Bowen. Obviously, we're on, currently on a lockdown, um, and um, uh, so we've got to take that into account just at the present. But uh, I do support you in, in your comments. Um, you know, uh, site visits are, are very useful. Councillor James, please. Yeah, Ch Chairman, just bearing in mind, I, I do never understand some of the places where these sort of businesses pop up uh, in close proximity to major major um thoroughfare and um, uh, interchange so close to it it, it seems un 
un, unsupportable. But bearing that in mind and other issues, um, I move that the motion be put. <clears throat> yeah, I think you're uh, currently the last speaker anyway. Um, oh, so um, I think that uh, concludes the debate. Um, before I go to Councillor Tillett and Councillor Roan, um, I'll ask for comments from uh, Mr. Bishop, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, um, I, I fully concur with members at site visit, personal reconnaissance. You know, that's what uh, I fully encourage by all my officers uh, to do that as part and parcel of their process uh, of their applications. And once we move, as we did la through the last lockdown, once we come start to come out of lockdown, I will be discussing with the chairman the need for appropriate site visits moving move, moving forward. Um, bear in mind the <coughs> dare I say it, the age of our committee. Uh, I, I, I'm 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 conscious of the fact to to keep members safe and safe as well. Albeit that, that, that this is a work requirement, uh, and if necessary, we could we could go go to site visits as we did through the last lockdown. Um, I hear the, the, the issues which um, have come up. I'm not surprised by, by, the, by the comments which have, which have been made. I would caution use of some of the policies which uh, the Councillor Milne has put forward. And I would concentrate that the, 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 the issue here quite, and quite rightly has been identified is the impact of the residential amenity of the adjoining properties. Um, from a highways perspective, you've got both both the Highways England and the Council's Highways Engineer confirming there's no objection. It'd be very difficult for us to defend that on appeal. Um, in terms of uh, the conservation area, I think Councillor Milne answered that himself. Should this area now be in the con should this be part of a conservation area? You'd question that. Uh, you've got the bright the bright lights and the bright canopies of of as the petrol filling station immediately opposite etc so i would caution against using that that policy as well as well as the townscape so i would concentrate your your minds towards sd1 which is the key one i would suggest for defending an appeal in this particular instance together with chapter eight of the national planning policy framework thank you chairman thank you mr bishop um, Right, I now uh, go, as I previously stated, to Councillor Roan and then uh, Councillor Tillett to uh, complete the debate. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just very briefly then, uh, it's all down to sometimes we ought to look at how this affects people. And I'm just wondering if any members of the committee would actually like to have a fast food unit uh, just a few feet away from their window on a hot summer's night a saturday night and knowing that it's going to be like that forever with those smells emanating uh, it wouldn't be acceptable to any members of the committee here it's certainly certainly not acceptable to any of the residents who live in belmont square thank you thank you councillor roan councillor uh, tillett please thank you chair and and thank you committee for your considerations and your comments uh, just a couple of very quick observations on the debate. Can I assure Councillor Selden that I uh, am no stranger to a Euros either, a Polikala, um, but the fact is that this is, this is in the wrong place. Yes, we should support small businesses, but not, not at the cost of harm to the immunity of our residents. Um, and this is, this is in the wrong place. It's fine in Hightown. It doesn't need to go bang up next to the, the windows of so many residents in Belmont Square. As, as Councillor Andrews uh, quite rightly says, um, you know, it is, it is as, as close as is, is feasible to put something. And um, really, sadly, without a site visit, uh, which, you know, Councillor Rowan and I both pushed for, but we do understand uh, the limitations. Um, but without a site visit, um, you can't perhaps quite appreciate how close this trailer is to the windows of those properties. So um, I'm very grateful to Councillor Andrews and to Councillor Milne for proposing and seconding refusal. I'm, I'm particularly grateful to Councillor Milne for his encyclopedic suggestion of, of reasons. Um, but from my own point of view, uh, I was going to uh, recommend, um, as, as Mr. Bishop has very helpfully said, that 
um, the refusal should be based on the same basis in which this site was refused 14 months ago uh, and on exactly the same basis that the, the Ledbury wine bar was turned down by your good selves just two weeks ago. Uh, namely, uh, SD1, which talks about safeguarding residential amenity for existing and future re residents and should ensure against adverse impacts from noise, light or air pollution. And indeed, as Mr. Bishop suggests, also chapter eight of the MPP framework, which um, also lays out um, taking in effect into account the likely effects of pollution on health and living conditions and the adverse impacts from noise and light pollution. So thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Tillett um, and Councillor Rowe. Um, right, we now um, have a tabled um, a motion uh, proposed by uh, Councillor Polly Andrews and seconded by Councillor Mill for refusal contrary yeah. to... Uh, Sorry, Can apologies. I... Can I just ask for clarification on the policies that they've actually put forward? Councillor Milne and Councillor Polly Andrews agree with policies LD1, LD4, MT1 and obviously SD1. But uh, you've heard from Mr Bishop. Can they please clarify exactly what the what those uh, policies that they want to refuse on are, please? Yes, I was just going to state those two policies. But um, OK, I'll ask um, uh, Councillor Polly Andrews to, um, to state as a proposal. Chairman, before, before Councillor Andrews uh, speaks, can I just um, uh, widen the, um, uh, the reasons for the MPPF to cover uh, paragraphs 180 as well? So can, can I just open that up to, to the MPPF in general, and we will then uh, hone it into the rele to relevant paragraphs as well? Thank you. Okay. Fine, thank you. Councillor Andrews. Thank you. I will take uh, uh, Mr. Bishop's valuable advice and on the um, proposals for refusal, the uh, conditions. I would say, though, uh, as Councillor Mill says, however inappropriate it might seem to looking at the area, it still is in the conservation area. Okay. So, uh, I w if Mr. Bishop feels that the policies of relating to the conservation area are inappropriate. I will accept his advice, but, uh, but Mr. Councillor Mill may have something to say on that. But it is, in, it, it is technically still in the conservation area, however okay. odd it may seem. Okay, thank you. Um, point taken and, and well made. Um, so we've got motion on the t uh, table then for refusal of this application contrary, citing SD1, and um, MPPF uh, Chapter 8 and, and 180. Um, so can members advise me that you've all heard the debate and, and the uh, presentation and you're eligible to vote? No dissenters. So um, can I ask Democratic Services if your uh, voting system is, is ready to launch and uh, advise the number of members eligible to vote, please? Uh, yes, Chair, the voting number is 12 and members can vote now. Okay, thank you, uh, Jenny. Right, so that's for refusal, against or abstain. Chairman, all the votes are in, um, unanimous um, for uh, refusal. Okay, so that's 12 um, votes uh, for refusal of this application, so that application falls. Um, right, I'd like to thank you all very much for your attendance at the meeting today and, and uh, the uh, full debate that we've had on, on the three applications in front of us. It just leaves me to advise you that the uh, date of the next meeting is the 17th of February, and uh, we may be in a position to have site inspections the day before on the 16th. Um, so you'll be advised um, if, if that uh, actually goes forward. So uh, I wish you a good day, and uh, thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you, Chairman. Um,